listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. Gonna slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On a big, nice burgundy snowboard. All right. Welcome back to the bomb hole, which is presented by Pub Beer. Now, first things first. Got to ask, Stony Buds, how are we doing today? So good, my dog. I'd say that's solid. That was a solid one. <laughs> I'd rate it maybe a nine, nine, nine. out of ten. I'll give that a nine. Thank you. Uh, to my left, we got Sean Fitzsimons in the booth. Sean, how are you doing today? Dude, fantastic. Thanks for having me on. Hyped to be here. Love to hear that. Uh, for our listeners that don't know who you are, um, I'll give them a breakdown. Sean is an incredible skateboarder. Probably could be a pro skater. He's a pro snowboarder. He's an Olympian. Just represented the United States of America in Slope and Big Air. Uh, he's the winner of the Locks Open. And there is no rail or jump he cannot front end double cork off of. <laughs> so uh, he's got a lot going on for him. He's killing it. Uh, but originally, he's a Northwest dogger. Uh, Where did you grow up? Born and raised Hood River, Oregon. Small town. Great community over there. A lot of support from them. Um Really saw that during the Olympics. I mean, it was, like, actually insane. I was, my phone was blowing up. I was seeing, like, full, like, storefronts with, like, I mean, it almost looked like I died or something. It was insane. (laughs) (laughs) I had images of you. They had Olympic watch parties where there was, like, basically a list to get in is what your brother was telling me. Dude, yeah, I kind of, I think, from my understanding, it started off as, like, a list just because of COVID and trying to keep it more chill and then eventually they just they gave up. Too many people were trying to get in, and like I saw the videos from the bar and Qualies, it was electric. It was nuts. I was blown away and just pretty astonished by the support. Like couldn't ask for a better community to grow up in. Yeah, pretty Hood nuts. Hood River. You guys got a lot going on there. You got uh, heavy wakeboarding. S- no kite, 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 kite that's right. Dylan Thompson. Dylan Thompson that's what I was D Thompson. About. I'm surprised. Do you ever think about going pro yeah. kiteboarder on him? No, dude, I always just like skating too <laughs> dude, much. you must have got in there in the kiteboard yeah, for I a did. little bit. I, mean, I was kiting for a while. Time. That's actually funny. So I started kiting at a pretty young age, actually. Oh, it's called kiting, sounds kiting. like. It's yeah, like kiting, yeah. Uh, well, that's like my parents got to Hood River because of windsurfing. Okay. So windsurfing's OG, and then kiting started coming around, and there's some loose kiting stories from back. Like my dad has some crazy ones, kite mirrors they call them. Because the kites were, like, super sketchy and just wasn't dialed like they are now. Pretty, like, real safe now. But, like, getting dragged through the woods and stuff and sketchy <laughs> shit. But um, but I did kite for a while. was pretty into it for a little bit. And then I just started to think it was too much of a hassle. And I was like, I can just go to the skate park and skate. And it takes me five minutes to drive down there. I just go skate. Versus the kiting, I have to go down. I load all my stuff in my truck. A lot of kites, a lot of gear, and then you get down the water, put your wetsuit on, harness, then you g- pump up your kite, walk it all the way down to the sandbar, string your lines, and then you go out. And it's like it's worth it if it's a sick hell. day. It's like a lot of effort. Yeah, it's so windy. I hate the wind. Dude, I would definitely my first time out be that dude getting dragged through the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I get that harness on, clip on, and <laughs> yeah, later. Right well, through the I'm forest. fascinated by the fact that you grew up with a mega ramp. And a mini or a vert ramp in your backyard. How the hell did you guys come up on that? Dude, so when I was five, we moved from, we were kind of downtown Hood River and then moved to the west side where there was more, like, we got like two acres of property out there. And my dad had this client, he's, he's an attorney, he had this client that was getting rid of the, the mega ramp, mini mega we call it. And he was like, do you want this mini mega? And my dad's like, I guess, I mean, I just got a bunch of property and my dad was like kind of BMXing and like was into mountain biking. He's like, sure, like we just got a bunch of property. Might as well just throw it, throw it in there. I wasn't even skating yet. Um, kind of learned how to skate by rolling down the, the landing of the, the kicker. So like this little six foot, whatever. And then from there, things just kind of started getting added on. I started skating, um, we had like a mini ramp in my garage before we remodeled. That was sick. So I thought of that. And then the vert ramp came about because Drew Brownrig, he had a vert ramp in Bend 
And yeah, shout out to Drew. Um, he had a vert ramp in Bend. They were like, we're, we're selling the house, trying to get rid of this vert ramp. Do you guys want it? And we're like, for sure. Like, su- like sick 11 foot vert ramp, skate light, everything. So me and my dad go down, get all the skate light off this ramp and load it up in the truck. And we have the coping too. Get back to our place. We're going back down the next weekend to go grab the rest of the ramp. And the new people move in and just like wrecking ball it. So we're like, oh shit. Now we have all this skate light for this ramp. So we, my dad's like, dude, let's just build it. And so like a three month project, my dad just went all in and like, I was helping. He was the brains, but I was like putting in screws and stuff. I was probably like 12 at this point. And so that's how the vert ramp came into. So when you're a vert baby, that's how you can just vert destroy yeah. transition. Because if you guys are unfamiliar with watching Sean skate, it's like, dude, big air johnson out there it's crazy skate vert bowls <laughs> transition but so why didn't you pursue a career in skating do you think about ever pursuing a career and being pro dude i did like when i was younger that was pretty much all i did um i think randomly we were driving by the skate park one time i think i was five or that might have been like four or five and i was like i don't even really remember it but for some reason i was like i want to skate and for my fifth birthday we went and my went to the local skate shop IPS and got some skates. My dad started at he was thirty eight, I think, at the time. He started skating at thirty eight. My brother got one. My first day at the skate park, my dad ends up dislocating his shoulder. Hangs Respect. up. Oops. Dislocates his shoulder. He's like walking to the car, tunnel vision, and he's like sweating and we're like, Are you good, dude? What's <laughs> going on? And and there you go. He's like uh, like doing like death thing, I'm okay, I'm okay. And like going to the car, he's like, I gotta call your mom. And we're like, all right, can we keep skating or what's what's going on? Um, but no, anyways, and then pretty much spent from five until like, I don't know, 12, pretty much every day at the skate park. The parents would just drop me off and then the older kids would look after me and I'd be hit like 10 hour days at the skate park just skating the whole time. They used to call me stunt fetus. Cause <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a name Chris would come up with. Yeah, guy, just this little grom, dude. I was like, I was like this little Trying piece of penis. rubber. It makes this, a lot of sense now. That was watching your snowboarding. Yeah, yeah. I was just like this little piece of rubber, like an all pads and a helmet, just trying to launch off anything. Anything. Um, but no, and then I did some skateboard contests uh, that were fun. Um, and then I got invited to Combi Pool Party. And that was kind of more off of a connection rather than feeling like I earned being there. And then when I got there, it really felt like a connection hookup and not like I earned it. So I was there and just like Chris Russell, Sorge, um, Corey Juno, like all the big cats that are big cats now were just going insane. And that was like so sick to be there and watch that competition live. It's like watching skating at that level live is pretty unreal. But no, me and my brother, I went I got last place. My brother got second to last. I was embarrassed when I was skating and kind of since then I have I was like I think I'm good on the contest skating thing. I'm just going to do it for me at that when, point. When you did that contest though, were you as good then? I was good now. Like you, are you better now though? Cuz Yeah, yeah, the much. footage I've seen of you looked incredible. I mean, but imagine if you're the big dog in yeah. Oregon and then you go to SoCal and you're like yeah. eating humble pie. You're, yeah, I mean it was everyone's the, just killing. by far the most humbling experience of my life. Yeah. Now your dad's an attorney. Mhm. Well, uh, hypothetically if I was in town caught a case, is he the type of guy that could help me out? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll get you dialed for sure. Cool. <laughs> Love that, buds. Uh, I gotta. <laughs> I mean, I you get, never know. I gotta know ask. Traveling. Have you ever? I was gonna hit one at the beginning of the show, but let's just hit one right now. Have you ever smacked a smelling salt, dude? Yeah, I have. Let's get into a couple. What do you think, buds? Yeah, I let's feel do like it. I Smack feel them. like you know it could be a good time to just get it going, just to get them. Do we, are we doing our own or just? Yeah, let's all go here. Yeah, we're swimming in them. Yeah, these days. yeah. We got available Jeez. bombhole.com. They're obviously. flying off the shelves too, so if okay. people want them, get them. You know what I mean? I'm gonna hit one first. Get it started. You smack it. Woo! Oh, you squeeze it. Oh, wow! All right, that's what I needed. I'm ready to go. Oh, he went. Deep. He went deep. Woo. Oh my God, stunt Woo. fetus. <laughs> stunt fetus, oh, goes, stunt deep. fetus <laughs> goes big again. Oh my God. Holy stunt yeah, fetus! The eyes eyes. Watering, dude. <laughs> that means you got good with it. Now, stunt oh. fetus. I have a. I have a question for you. Are you? All right. I, 
I, you don't have a, you don't have an energy drink sponsor right now, right? No. Mm. Okay. Well, maybe there's one that works. Maybe there's not. But if it doesn't happen, I got a pitch for you. We're looking to kind of like come after the Red Bulls and the monsters of the world with run through a wall smelling salt. It's not a drink. We think we can take them out. But we basically. think we can take them out. Now, I was wondering, like, do you think I could hit up Runky? Would you be interested in wearing a run through a wall smelling salts helmet? Uh, like we get, you know, um, like the Red Bull helmet, you know, um, big deal, huge bonuses, things like that. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Sure. Yeah. We'll send over the paperwork. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get this deal going. I would just, it would be so amazing to figure out, like, imagine if it's... But I want and, this, like, I want it, like, wrapped like a red oh, like, bull, like, yeah. run through a wall huge <laughs> yes. right here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll figure out the, we'll work maybe, out the logistics maybe of cheddar biscuits. face, right, as he's popping out of the wall, too. That's a pretty good image. And it'd be killer, like, when any of my boys get knocked out, I'll have them in my pocket. <laughs> here you go. Uh, got you. Pop up. Right up. And then, like, you know how they don't, like it, right as you drop in, the camera's on you. You do the you high five Dave Reynolds, and then you whack a sniffer. Yeah, and then you drop in and you go front Richter scale yeah. off the rail. Do you do you feel like you get like like because I just hit that was my second time ever doing one. Felt like eyes watering. You guys do them frequently. Yeah. Um, you went, do you get like like how you do with coffee like or like any substance? You build a tolerance to it, or every time you like. Whew, I think you just went too deep. Yeah. You you learn as you go the fine line of like what's the perfect sniff. The perfect sniff. Yeah. But you don't get a <laughs> you don't build a tolerance to this stuff. No, I mean they're great for a lot they're great yeah. for long drives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, both, I was both golfing and physically driving. Yeah, I was long falling asleep drives. at the yeah, wheel. <laughs> this guy cracked one, put it under my nose, we were good to go. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're definitely good pre-jump. So anyway, uh, I think we should try to figure that out. We'll talk to Runky and what does the normal, what do the energy drinks do? Like if you win, do you you get like ten grand probably or something, huh? Or they match? Yeah, I maybe. think they usually match. They match. The or it, I guess it depends on the contract, but I think for the most part they'll match. We're gonna just sell a lot more smelling salts. Yeah, we're gonna have to step our fucking, game up. Yeah. We're gonna have to, so we're gonna Anybody out there, it. if you want to help with this endeavor, just buy some selling smelling salts. Yeah, bombhole.com. Yeah, these are good. Use promo code uh, fetus baby for five percent off. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make that happen for a week. Well, actually, Jules we'll set that one up. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, where were we? Oh yeah, let's talk snowboarding. Wait, so it wasn't fetus baby. It was st stunt fetus. Stunt fetus. <laughs> stunt fetus. <laughs> and you know what's funny? You know what's funny is those guys didn't even tell me I was stunt fetus until I was older. Like, oh, oh really? yeah, we used to call you stunt fetus. As you were yeah. all around, there's like, yeah. there is stunt. You'd be yeah, doing there some goes. tricks. Yeah. It's like you the, had no clue. No, and they told me when I was older, like when I finally took the pads off, like oh, stuff. You just lost the pads. <laughs> you were just all pads too. Uh, oh yeah, dude. Just dude, little. like rolling around, like you like as a grom. You know, when you're that young, you go boom, bounce off. It's like rubber. It doesn't even. You're chilling, but then you do like little siren cry. You're like six years old. And you go. <laughs> There's like, well, there's two ways to go about the Grom cry. It's that one. It's like where you're like, they hit, and you're like, damn, that was gnarly. And then they're like, it's all quiet. And then you go, <laughs> then they get super that. loud. Or it's like the the kid, the Grom that smacks, it's all quiet. And then he's like trying to play it cool and trying to get out of the bull. And then someone goes, are you good? And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> the second someone asks, yeah, so someone asks, like, I'm not good. But yeah, then, what, 10 true. minutes later, they're trying the same thing, taking the it. same yeah. slam. Yeah, rubber body at that point. Yeah. So, snowboarding, you're from Hood River. What do you go? Uh, Timberline? Uh, so, winter, meadows, winter was Meadows. Yep. T-Line summer. Mm. So, pretty dialed. Dialed on that end. I would go to kind of when I was younger, if it was like sunny, kind of park day, sometimes I'd go over to T-Line because the jumps were some – were. I mean, now the parks are always changing over there. It's like kind of hard to, kind of depends on what era you're in, like which which side of the mountains the better park. But occasionally I'd go over and ride T line jumps um, if Meadows Park wasn't super good, and the other way around, you know. So it's good to have both, um, and especially T line in the summer is unreal, having that at like forty minutes from your house. I got a question coming in from your brother. Uh, I've I think it's good early on so i'm gonna hit it right now here we go hey sean it's your bro tucker here why don't you talk about how you thought you were spider-man <laughs> oh god <dude. laughs> shortest guest question ever uh, i gotta respect a that great one, <laughs> a great one uh 
dude, when I, when I was younger, I think, I don't even, I think I was like six, seven, seven, in that range, you know, maybe eight. Um, I like got obsessed with Spider-Man for a second and wore a Spider-Man costume for two years. Two years two straight. Two years straight. Yeah, like it'd be all ripped up and tattered and like I'd be running around the Spider-Man cost, cost, like all these pictures of daycare and I'm in this little Spider-Man suit. I love that your parents around. just let you rock that for two years. Like they were like, what? Yeah, they're just let, let the kid do his thing. You talk to about Spider-Man with Miles Fallon. He's a big Spider-Man. I know. I just, I just listened to that one. That one is sick. He's huge on Spider Man, and I love the the video part. And then it goes Spider Man, huge curveball. I was like, no way, it's so <laughs> sick. <laughs> and then he hits the line too. Mm-hmm. He knew it. it was you know, he wasn't bullshitting. He no. knows his stuff. Well, yeah, your snowboarding is kind of reminiscent of Spider Man. I mean, the front ten off the rock and shit. Fucking some Spider Man shit. That is some Spider Man shit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> so growing up, uh, I'm guessing, you know, you went contest route. So mm-hmm. you had probably USASA. Uh, did you do nationals and stuff when you were a kid? Yeah, definitely the whole nationals grind. Definitely the most stressful week for a Grom ever. It's like so hectic. Um, it, how'd you do? Dude, I didn't do that like younger. Actually, I had like one peak season i like I, I won in breaker boys like 12 to 13 or something i think and i like i won slope and pipe so that was like kind of like a little breakout i guess and then next season just got broke off so the ups and downs um but yeah nationals is always weird like you're looking forward to it but like you also dread it at the same time just because of how stressful that week is and like the practice it's who were the other it. dogs in your class who'd you compete against when you were a kid I had like Luke would be there. I remember Hanky watching man. Judd when I was young. I, Hankies. Yeah, I think we were like, I don't know, maybe like 11, 10 or 11. And he was like this little, like, just squatted little thing going like massive out of the pipe, just holding his line. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny to watch. I was like, holy shit, that kid's insane. That was also like a humbling thing for me, too, was going to nationals. Well, the most humbling actually was Rev Tour. Yeah, I was wondering about that. So, yeah nationals you know like i'd done those but the the jumps weren't like big like how mammoth is and especially just from the viewer perspective of a mammoth jump it's like this massive launch ramp and it's like the lip is 15 feet off the ground you're like holy shit um so i remember we me and my dad like road trip down there get to mammoth and i like we get to the we go and first time to mammoth look at the jumps i'm 13 and my dad like calls up my mom and he goes, I think I made a serious parental error. Like these <laughs> jumps are huge. I don't know what we're doing here. And I'm like, look at these jumps. Like, holy shit, dude, what? Like, cause in Oregon, they didn't have anything like that. And then even Colorado, we're hitting the small side of stuff like during nationals. So no idea. And like, that's like the kind of stuff you see like in magazines, photo shoot stuff. And now it's like, I'm about to ride this course. And luckily... I had met Dusty at nationals and he just fully took me under his wing and was like, dude, I'll show you the speed right now. And so like within the hour, Dusty just like has me. He's like, we're hitting these jumps. I'm like, all right, shit. Hit him. And like, yeah, all the props to Dusty for that one. Taking me on my wing under his wing. Like that was scary. Like seeing those things for the first time. But then in the comp, very humbling too. Like you see, there was like Nick Bate and Brandon Davis when they were still doing them shouts to those cats. <laughs> Uh, and all those other like Chandler and just the big dogs at the time doing those contests. And I'm like, dude, I'm so out of my element here, but it's also like kind of a motivation to see that you make, I probably get to that, that point. Look at that foreshadowing. You got dusty yeah. towing in uh stunt fetus. Yeah. <laughs> Fast forward a few years later, they're both in the Olympics and yeah. fucking doing their thing. Yeah. It's interesting. And I suppose everyone is in that position at one point to get there. I think this is like scared. probably two years ago for yeah, Fitzsimons though, because he's huh? like, well, how old are you, 21? 21, yeah. Yeah, that's sick. Um, I got a question for you. So a lot of people, when they do contests, me personally, when I'm going to hit a backcountry jump, like I always feel like I got to take a shit right before I go. Uh, do you get the pre-contest uh, diarrhea slash uh, shit? It's like nerves or fear. Dude, it's weird if I don't based. take three before I drop in. Three. Three, three shits, yeah. Three. Two to three. Like, two, I'm like, that was a pretty light day. 
three feeling comfy like i'll hit four sometimes <laughs> like oh, honestly oh, dude it's you crazy feel, you just feel like you have one in the chamber yeah i, I can always go <laughs> i can go a whole time i wonder what the science is but then that. I, but then if like i have to go and then as soon as i drop in do my run nothing so it's it's only for the first one first run right yeah yeah usually so once the nerves are taken care of it goes away yeah and even if i fall on my first run it's like just the first initial and I think more, I'm usually done, like I'm usually got it out of the way before practice. Yeah. Because you don't want to be, maybe I'll do it in between practice and comp too. Man, I was just thinking about going back to Rev Tours. The kids are gnarly. There's people you've never heard of that are just kid, like kids that like can all do nowadays. Like, like a, if you're not doing 1080s and stuff, like you ain't doing anything. Dude, it's Basically wild. You shouldn't be there, right? Yeah. It's wild, like, that was kind of the motivation for me to try to do my first dub 10. Got so broke off. It was, like, so fried. I was just like, I need to do a double cork after going to Rev Tour. Try to back 10, like, didn't know where I was and, like, focused both my ankles. Um, but that's kind of the funnest. I would say that's maybe the funnest contest to watch is a Rev Tour because you see all these guys that are, like, trying their first doubles, like, in comp, and that's, like, that's like a gnarly thing to step to, especially if you're not like super dialed yet. But that's kind of just the progression there. You know, you got to try one and see how it goes. There's no other way to do it. So watching, like going, you go to Copper and you just see like 12 to 13 year olds just chucking. It is so fun to watch. But because they just, they're just like, they're getting bodied, but they just bounce. It's crazy. Rado parks are like brave heart. Mel Gibson, like, <laughs> proving grounds Dude. of Chuck Roast. <laughs> like, die hard. Like, it's gnarly. <laughs> the kids are painting their faces. Yeah, they're, they're just putting on war paint, <laughs> war and paint. they're going out, and they're <laughs> chucking dubs, landing on their back. Okay, no, they're all, they all land. Everybody's well, just, the level of they land. riding is just unreal there. Just negative 30 degrees. You're going to shatter if you land. You just feel, like, yeah, so, so cold stiff and horrible, and you just <laughs> land on your back, the snow's got that, like, dry, like, crunchy, like... Yeah. Oh, God, dude. Jeez. All right, we're going to get into a Volcom ad right now. Uh, let's talk fit. Yeah, let's talk fit. Maybe a pre-contest run where you fit your pants, something like that. Is it a fear-based fit or uh, just a normal fit? I don't know. Let's go. I'm actually fitting bricks right now. <laughs> yeah, me too, bud. <laughs> All right, we're going to get into a guest question from none other than Luke Winkleman. I'll give him a quick air horn. But before we do... We're going to talk to you guys about Union Bindings. Now, Union has deep roots in snowboarding. They're owned and operated by snowboarders. Clackner is an OG. Everybody that works there is an OG. Uh, coming up on close to 20 years in the business, they have grown from a small brand to the number one binding company in snowboarding. The new Ultra Binding also just came out. This thing is top of the line, freestyle binding, ready to chuck roast in that thing. The 22... 23 website is live now head on over to unionbindingcompany.com and get yourself some union bindings all right with that being said let's get into the luke winkleman guest question yo what up homies um hope y'all are enjoying the episode sean is a gym i'm i'm excited for this one uh Bon, I just wanted to ask what are some of your favorite activities to get up to in the summer in hood river we had quite a time out there with your friends and fam. Uh, maybe let some people know what we get into there. And talking skateboarding quick, with owning your own vert ramp, did you ever want to pursue a career in skateboarding? You're incredible at it. Enjoy, guys. Peace. Yeah, much love, Luke. Love you, brother. Excited to see you soon in Europe. Um, dude, it's like a bit of a compound at my house. Like My parents are, I actually can't say enough good things about them they're just so down with everyone um i was telling buds earlier we have these my dad and i built these tent platforms out there so it's like homies will come luke came uh dusty has come in the past and just a bunch of other homies will come and stay at my house during the summer and these tents like a 10 person tent and you have it all to yourself and it's like a queen mattress off the ground pretty dialed setup and we have like three of those platforms set up now 
so we'll just have people rolling through all summer but yeah we get up to a bunch of stuff um a typical day for me and luke was we would go up to the mountain every day snowboard till like two or three come back down get a quick nine in and then either go skate or get in the water but like my hometown buddies um they have a youtube channel called the sickos and they just do like crazy stunts and just crazy ideas whatever they can think of like recently they did this wild slip and slide you can like go look at it look it up on youtube but it's basically you get towed in by a jet ski and you're sitting in this tube and you just get you get launched like 50 60 the feet in the sage air got is that where sage yeah and yeah like tour gear we're going banana yeah bananas that one wow. but this year it was like even gnarlier like I almost feel like if it got gnarlier, people are going to get seriously broke off or something. Um, get Tommy broke. But yeah, stuff like that. A lot of rope swings around. A lot also of time in the water. world-class mountain bike trails. I used to stop and camp mm-hmm. up there. Uh, what are those trails called there, the fun ones? Uh, Post Canyon. Post Canyon, that's yeah. the That's the zone. And then, like, Sandy Ridge uh, over in Welch's is pretty money. So I do a lot of mountain biking as well. It's pretty cool because you have the kind of stuff that's in the big pine trees, like uh, Post Canyon. And then across the way, you're in like Lord of the Rings style, you know, big overview, big open. Yeah, like uh, I think you're probably thinking of like Sinclair, you like right on that ridge, yep. that gnarly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's pretty diverse, like and especially in the spring, Sinclair um, will go off because it might be still too wet in uh in the woods but syncline the money because it gets some sun they got that chocolate cake out there buds <laughs> the <Yeah>. dirt <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i was like i was like what could he possibly be talking about brown pow <laughs> got the brown pow <laughs> it's just uh unlike any other place or what it's it's good dirt. i mean it's better than moisture? we live in the desert here Ours is they, just dry huh? they got they got moisture in the dirt yeah i heard uh you're a bit of a hog on the mtb I spent some time on the MTB for sure. I didn't actually do a whole lot of it this summer, but... What is an MTB? Mountain bike. Oh, okay. I thought we called it something else earlier. <laughs> D- downhill bike? Downhill yeah, bike, yeah. yeah. DH? They call it DH, MTB. I mean, what, how am I going to keep a up A lot of abbreviations stuff? happening here, buds. Yeah, I think just Hood River, there's so much to do, and there's so many opportunities to try new things, you know, like kiting, um, mountain biking, skating, snowboarding, all there in the summer. The coast is two and a half hours away, and the whole community is like just so active. Um, but yeah, do a lot of uh, that's like the most phasey thing for me actually is mountain biking. I'll go and I'll go hit it super hard every day, can't get enough, and then one day it's just done for like months, and then I'll be like get like rejuiced on it and just go so much, and then be like, all right. All right, I think we should get into summer of Simon's. Uh, we talked about this <laughs> Big summer, on huh? ABU, uh, but if you guys missed ABU, we're going to talk about it again. Basically, uh, the kid had a big summer up there. Uh, I would say you and Chad Otterstrom both won Mount Hood, <laughs> uh, in my opinion, IMO. And um, the first one we got to talk about is the front 10 double cork that was completely psychotic that you did off the rock up at the top of Mount Hood. Yeah, so I guess the full story there was, I think the whole mentality kind of came from, um, so at the Olympics, I kind of busted my ankle again, got surgery in April, and then I like missed the whole spring, and I remember just sitting there and doing PT rehabbing, and just seeing like all these sick spring clips, because it was such a late spring, people were getting pow till June, and I was like, damn, I really want to be out there, but it was like... Kind of one of my first times back boarding was the solstice party. So I went up there, and it is just such a cool vibe. There's so many people that are so psyched to be there. Um, but we're chilling. To explain what that is, basically at the at the longest day of summer, everybody hikes to the top of Mount Hood, and there's a giant party on the ridge with looked like 100 people or something. Yeah, so basically Palmer closes at 2. Everyone gets up there before it closes, and then it's just like this giant migration to uh, what is called Illumination Rock just below the summit. It's an hour and a half probably hike up there. Um, And, dude, like, I'm not kidding, probably, like, 150, 200 people are up there and just so psyched. And then everyone watches the sunset. But usually we build a kicker. And this year we couldn't build a kicker because they 
you never that's also the fun part about this party you never know what you're going to get up there maybe you build a qp this year because the the landing isn't working or maybe the jump is on but this year was the rock um govy homie uh ian uh pinky brigade big shouts to him he goes up and starts building this this rock jump and from the bottom you're like dude this is so sketchy so me and max go and hike up there warbs shouts to warbs he's the man big shouts um hike up there without our boards because we're like dude i don't want to like hike up with my board and then i'm like now i have to hit this <laughs> so you consciously made the effort of yeah the board you behind. don't yeah you don't want to be like hit it like dude i don't want my board and they're like oh okay Bro, tip. i guess that yeah, was board yeah, that board um just a little sneaky thing right there yeah right. got up there and i was like dude it actually is pretty like it looks pretty chill actually having a good sesh up there a lot of cats and uh did like a front set did like a front seven, kind of overcooked it, and I was like, "Whoa, like maybe a front ten could be there." So then I went back up, got the front seven, and then I was kind of like, "Dude, I kind of want to try a front ten off this rock right now." And I kind of look at Max, and I'm like, "Dude, you think I should try that?" And he's like, "I don't know. It seems like you'd probably get there." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> um, sure." And then so then I just yinged one, and it went. And then I tried it like five times that night but i was pretty smoked like that impact was super gnarly and i kind of like just i landed you didn't it make it that night no i landed it twice like as good as i thought i could land a trick and just like kind of buckled in the landing i was like dude it's like not doable i think i just there's too much impact and so i called it go down had a, like a little lot party which was sick but i was kind of like in the back of my head just like dude I feel like I maybe could have landed that. Um, go down to Hood River. And I'm just like kind of thrown off all day. You know when you just want a trick so bad, but you can't. Like it's all you start thinking about. And then that night, and then I'm like down Hood River and I'm just in this funk. And I call up the homie Hunter Hess. Big shouts to him. Um, we lived in Salt Lake this year together. Um, and I'm like, dude, do you think I, like if I'm if I go back up, are you down to come up and film it? And he's like, for sure, I got that, dog. Like, I know you got that. And I'm like, all right, word. So the next day, drive up there, um, link up, do like a couple park laps with the boys, and then we catch the last chair, go up Palmer, and then it's me, Hunter, and then Burke Irving. Also huge shouts because the only reason that I got to do it again was because of those guys like coming up with me. That's a long trek, especially – and they just had a full day of skiing. Um, get up there, and the landing's, like, pretty mangled. So we, like, kind of start trying to throw some snow in there, uh, build the build, rebuild the lip, and I'm like, dude, all right, I got to do it now. There's no people, no energy either, yeah. too. It's, like, a whole different yeah, vibe. Yeah, a whole different vibe Dude, before there. I'm le- – yeah, it's, like, a way different vibe. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm kind of up there, and I'm like, fuck, dude, like – what, what am I doing, dude? Too. Yeah, I got these guys all the way up there. Like, dude, you got this. And I'm like, are you sure I got this? Looks, <laughs> this doesn't look nearly you, as chill as it did last time. Did you warm it yeah. back up or did you jump right back into it? I just went right back into Holy it. Holy shit. Yeah, respect. well, I was like, dude, this impact, <laughs> I can't take too many of these. I just got to either, like, I just got to go for it. Cold turkey but, front end dubsky. As like classic mom deal, too. I'm leaving. She's like, you know, you don't have to do this. And I'm like, don't say that. Like, that's scaring me. And, uh, She's just, yeah, looking out for me, but. So then I kind of have that in my head. I'm like, is this one of those where I'm like, wait, I'm like in over my head and maybe just should have let it rest. And But yeah, tried it the first time, kind of blew up. Second time, kind of blew up again. Third time, really blew up. <laughs> Third time, really blew up. Blew and then, up, really blew up. And then I remember I was up there. And I was like, the landing was so bombed out. I'm like, dude, if I don't land it this time, we're going to have to re- like try to rebuild this landing. And it was kind of like one of those moments where you're just like, I'm so over this. Like, I got to land it now. I'm so over it. Dude, it was so impacting. You literally. In the bomb hole, yeah. Yeah, you were all up in that bomb hole with the resurrection. But the 
the uh, impact is insane. Like whatever injury you were nursing is clearly healed if you didn't yeah, explode clearly, on that. Clearly huh? healed. Yeah, that was something that was funny. Malachi Gerard, he like commented. He goes like, um, "The mission to test the ankle or whatever." It's funny. Now like, that thing went viral too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was actually funny too because Clavin, I was up there and he just like Mark Clavin. Yeah, he just Facetime me randomly, you just to um, check in. And then like, and I just like turn around and show him the jump. He's like, "Oh shit, you you're going back for it. You're here." And I'm like, "Yeah, I'd let you know how it goes, I guess." And then that was it. And then I just sent him the clip. And but that's like the ultimate dude to hype you up too. He's sick. Clavin. He's, he's fucking he, sick. know he could be a potential dude. another team rider for yeah. run through wall smelling salts yeah, as he's well. Great, great energy with that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a quick Patreon question. This is from uh, Thomas Portet. When are we going to be seeing a step-down contest in the Illumination Saddle? And who will take second place behind you? <laughs> uh, dude, I would be, that would actually be sick, kind of turn it into a... How many, how many ACLs do you think would go on that? <laughs> dude, yeah, who knows? <laughs> but Honestly. the saddle's different than the rock? There's like a whole, it's a whole different Well, thing. they kind of just, yeah, the it's rock is the there, zone. and then the saddle is kind of what everyone sits on, you know? And that's where Darcy went up and got that crazy ski photo, right? Darcy. Ski photo of the year, Darcy Baca. I don't know. Don't know what that. You guys yeah. haven't seen this thing, mm -hmm. dude. They drop in because right next to it, there's that big pointy rock. Right, mm -hmm. that's elimination rock. So some skier, they built a giant kicker, and I think they brought a winch up to get him speed. Can you get oh, speed what? if you had a huge kicker? Yeah, like Sammy. There's you got to hit it. You got to hit it. It was Sammy. It. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It, it was like ski photo of the year, like five years ago. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Like, cause his on top of hood project. Yeah. It was, like, it was crazy. It's insane, the production on that. They had, like, cable. Yeah, they built this like, huge kicker and just jumped. He was super high in a sunset next to Illumination mm -hmm. Rock. It's like this amazing photo. You can build a massive hip if you have the snow right. It was, and it, I guess the snow was just right for that. Yeah, I think it was probably, like, around March when there's a lot of snow yeah. up there. Incredible. Incredible spot. All right, some, so you, part two of the question is who would take second? Yeah, who would take second? Dude, I was so bummed. I was trying to we, me and Max were trying to get Mason Jar to come out, but I think he ended up having oh. to work. But I think that dude, he could Back probably, probably take off that thing. Yeah, he's an animal, dude. He's not scared of anything. No. He's just chucking. It's so sick to watch. That's yeah, a good Mason Jar right is a there, great. Huh? That's a great I think answer. that's like it's right up his alley. That yeah, whole so. that whole scene, that whole vibe. Okay, part two, summer of Simon's uh, up up jam. You know, we, we talked about this on ABU, but we're going to get back into that. Uh, there's been a number of highlights where you did the board slide lawn dart, or, and then the board slide kind of like, I don't know what you call that, cork seven, toadio almost thing. Yeah, like under flip seven, under flip I seven. don't know. And then the freaking one summer with, I also have to uh, mind you, you did front lip too, front lip. Yeah, I figured it was, like, because then you can kind of do, like, court. little rock, like, the rock out of it a bit. Walk us through the front lip, front 10 double. So that just turned into a similar deal as the rock, I guess, in a way. But it was, uh, I was like, dude, maybe I'll try, like, the dub fronty that Dusty did yep. years back. And that was kind of the, the intro there. Line. Like, the dub lawn dart fronty uh, thing. Oh, gotcha, yep. And Dusty had done that, and I'm like, damn, that. I think I have enough pop, but maybe I'll try that. And I, like, did a couple of fronties that day, and I was like, dude, this is sus. Like, you can't see anything. And then my homie's like, dude, you should just try to, like, like do, like, dub 10 type deal out of that, like, that weird underflip thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, maybe. And then, like, spent, like, two days. I went up there and, like, just went up there and bitched out every time. Like, would go in <laughs> two and be like, days in a row. I'm like, I'm doing it. This try. I'm going to try it. And then would go in and be like, ah, and then, you know, classic type of deal. Um, But no, then the day I tried it, it was like Luke was hyping me up. And I'm like, dude, I just got to try it at this point. I've thought about this for like four days now. I just, I got, you got to do it eventually. Tried it. Almost got to my feet. We were so fired up. We're like, holy shit. And then go back to the top and just like immediately drop in again. And got so bodied. It was insane. Like, <laughs> Come around. And the funny thing was, the last thing in my head is like, oh, it's all day. This is like, I'm going to land it this try as I'm coming through. And then next thing I know, just like full face plant into the bumps. So smoked, seeing stars. And I'm like, dude, maybe I'll try it again. Like, it seems like it's there. 
And then kind of the boys were like, dude, just chill. It'll be here next week. Just chill. Like, if you hit your head, don't mess with that. And I was like, smart. Like, you know, you always hear those, like, terrifying stories of dudes hitting their heads yeah. twice in a row, and that's something you just don't want to mess yeah. with. So kind of, so called it, and then came back up Monday next week. Tube's gone. And I had asked Park Crew before I left the, the following because they do a Sunday rebuild. I'm like, yo, is this tube going to be here? And they're like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm like, all right, money, I'll just come back next week. Come back next week, it's gone. I'm like, what is going on? I go around asking Park Crew. I'm like, yo, where's the tube? And they're like, oh, we took it out. Like, there's too much, like, with the jump and the tube, it was too hectic. And I'm like, this is a park, like. We're snowboarding. It's not ski racing. It's supposed Come to on. be hectic, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be hectic. And, like, people are watching out for each other. Like, it's people, no one's trying to land on anyone, you know. And so that was kind of, so I went up every day that week. Every day I went up, I was like, yo, can we get this two back in? Can we get this two back in? I'm harping on them. And I'm like, I just really need to get this trick. And it's like another one of those you lose sleep about. You're like, I know I could do it. But um, so then eventually I'm like, dude, should I just drop it on my gram? just the clip and be like timberline put this up not knowing they would fully fully call my bluff so i dropped the clip and then i had like rob rothler cal Ahmet, all those boys in this group chat and they're like yo send me that clip i'm putting it on my story and then they're putting it on their story calling timberline out for it and then like i had sleeper was hitting up like a lot of people were dming and i'm like dude this is kind of becoming more than what it has to be now i'm like <laughs> Now I really need momentum on you. Yeah. Now what happens? They put it back in. It's like, I do the, I got to land it or get broke off trying felt like, so I went up there. Cat driver hits me up. He's like tubes in, go get it Monday morning. I'm like, Oh man. So then I went up Tuesday. I think it was, it was closed Monday. It had to melt out. Went up Tuesday. And then it's like such a scene. They're like, are you going to like, I'm going up the lift. Like, Oh, are you coming back for the tube? Are you doing it today? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't even hit it yet, dude. Um, but yeah, it worked out. I think I, I like changed the grab, which I think. What were you trying first, melon? No, I was trying to do indie and then change it to mute. Oh, really? Um, because I was looking at the clip and just it was like too much, not flippy enough. Where you would like have that potential. Or you're like, spinning it too much, not mm -hmm. flipping it hard enough. You yeah, makes like you flip more. I think so, and it kind of just opens you up a bit more to look over, and it's kind of like. Indie I found with front ten, you sort of spin out and land. You're spinning too much coming and landing, so it's mm -hmm. less consistent, I guess. Whereas if you're flipping, you kind of come like like crippler yep. to your feet, right to your toes. Yeah, right to your toes or like flat base. Yeah, mm. and so I think that was kind of the issue um, with that. So I changed the grab, and then I think I got it like fourth try, wow. fifth try that day. But it was like seemed it was chill after once I switched to grab, it was mellow. Seems wild to get loaded loaded game. up to load up, but I guess you're just it's not like you're spinning you're initiating off of metal, not off of a Yeah, that's the difference I don't Off imagine. of uh like your heel edge. Yeah. I don't know. I think it just comes from the hips, I guess. Well, that's an interesting one because uh I was wondering this. Like how many how many front ten doubles do you think you've done in your life? <laughs> Instead of curiosity. How many spins around there in this washing machine of life? Dude, I actually have no idea. Like, I mean, every all winter you're going to contests. You probably do a couple warming mm -hmm. up every time. Every time, right? Yeah, I guess if I'm going to do like a front fourteen, definitely doing a couple of front tens before that. Done a lot so of front. on 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 an average week. Let's say all winters. <laughs> let's just break this down. Let's break it because down. Because like how many on a an day? average week? You're like you're probably going to do what like twenty, ten, five. If five, it's five contest, low, contest, if it's contest, low. I'm probably contest week. I'm probably cranking like. Five to ten a, a day. day. Five to ten a day. And it kinda they kinda become yeah, five to ten a day contest. We'll go conservative. Five a day, five days a week. Mm, probably I don't, probably I don't three. Think this is a nine to five scenario. Though. Let's go let's go ten a day, three days a week. So that's thirty. We're 30. talking like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So let's say thirty for you know, and you're going to a bunch of contests. So I feel like you're probably I bet like a hundred's probably a like <laughs> like a decent guess. Yeah, I'd almost say maybe more like when you take into account like going to Sasfe and stuff when you're mm. scared to like try a new trick. Like before I tried like first front 14, did so many front 10s. It was like almost like dumb. They're like, 
And you're out there with the boys. They're all doing them, so you guys are just all hucking, huh? Yeah. That's why contest guys are so So much better than video part people, their consistency, because I was asking Sage about that one time. I'm like, dude. How do you like land the cab nine every time? Or he's like, like, I've done a thousand. I've done a lot of cab <laughs> nines. Yeah. And it's incredible because you look at a lot of like, you know, people that film video parts, aka most of my friends. Yeah, but look at you though. How many back lips in your life? But you like, know? think about like, I filmed a handful of cab nines in my part. I, the only time I've ever you done cab again, nines right? is literally when I'm filming one for my part or something, that you is, know. That, is, that makes me it's laugh. It's like all these the guys time. are like, ah, uh, yeah, I did, I did a hundred this year. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just so it, it, everything comes down to reps on that. Yeah, get your reps up. Mm-hmm. So you're, are you an advocate of getting the reps up, dude? Biggest supporter of reps, because that's what I, that's what I found is everything is just if you just do it a bunch you're just gonna get s- way more consistent with everything so you're not only an advocate you're a supporter supporter yeah you don't even tell your friends it's you actually the, the sean fitzsimons get those reps get up those foundation reps up for foundation kids who can't read kids. good get the reps <laughs> up you can't spin good get the <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's um, the that's the that. mantra that's the kids who can't mantra. spin good all right we're gonna take a quick break and talk to you about 686 huh buds yes we are Coolest thing about 686 is it's owned and operated by a snowboarder, Mike West. This dude is dope. He actually used to sponsor me back in the day, Chris, which is kind of incredible. And Blotto. He actually surrounds himself with great people at the company all the time, which is something I think is really cool. Guys like Forrest Bailey are on the team. Pat McCarthy's running the team. George Cavalli, East Coast legend. I mean, the list goes on and on. Surrounds himself with good people. He's kept his company going 30 years, which is uh, pretty incredible this day and age in snowboarding. Uh, exciting news with 686. They're expanding the line in a new category with streetwear, maybe better called activewear because the materials are so dope. In my case, we're calling it loungewear because it's so comfortable. I'll wear it at the airport. Small line of tech clothing designed for climbing, hiking, mountain biking, even parkour if that's what you're into. Well, you're kind of nice with the parkour. <laughs> I'm pretty nice with the parkour. Have you seen my video on YouTube? Yeah, no, I haven't. This actually doesn't exist, but I'm working on it. I'm working on putting out, putting out a sick, sick parkour video wearing this new 686 activewear. Um, you're going to see me rocking this this in the new video that I'll be making. It's going to come out uh, 2034. <laughs> it's going to be a, a heavily filmed, heavily uh, big budget, too, for this. But 686, man, check out their new gear. Their new line is going to be awesome. They're not just outerwear anymore. It's also streetwear. Check them out, 686. Let's go. All right, Sean. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about training, training camp. That's a shitty word, but like he seems like he's so young. Does he even train? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, getting ready for the season. You guys go over to Locks, or do you go to Dubai? How do you guys get ready for the season? What's that energy like? Yeah, we do go. We go to Sasfe usually, and then go into Dubai after that. But yeah, I do agree. Training camp, not a dope word for it. It just you're just bored in with your homies, and the vibes are like. Dude, it's kind of, the fall is like probably the scariest time of the season, but the most fun. Um, like this year in Dubai, it was like me, uh, Red, and Luke, and there's just this massive jump. Dude, this jump was scary to straighter. You'd rather just like spin and like, so you didn't have to see as much because this thing was like, you're just going up this wall like, what? oh shit, and then you just fly off and it's it's terrifying really. And, and like, you'll be seeing, ev- like, everyone there is trying All to... All the dogs. Everyone's trying to be somebody. And, like, you always go and you're, like, trying to warm up into snowboarding, but, like, first day you're there, you're seeing, like, triple cork, triple cork, triple cork, and you're like, dude, I, this is my first time touching my board in so long. Um, I just want to do a 360 and, like, start to work, I like, do, like, a switchback five and work, ease into things, but just the vibe is so crazy that you're like, all right, I guess we're on, and... um. Like, are you going to get side weird looks if you're doing a 360? Like, damn, this guy didn't bring it. What's up? Yeah, no, not, I mean, just like, and then, but then it's kind of like, it's like this weird group mentality where it's like, all right, we're just going to kind of chill today. And then next thing you know, like Red's doing back 16, you're like, I guess we're not chilling today. And then everyone's not chilling and then they're just launching. Um, but that's the sickest vibe because when all the boys are just on and chucking, it's like, it's like so electric and everyone's just so much adrenaline pumping. And you're just like, all right, we're going. And uh, but you'll be at the top with 
your boys and you just see somebody just like there's like there's no way this jump is going to be open after that like you like you know when you're at you see some something go crazy and you're like dude and you see him like disappear on their head and you like grab your buddy and you're holding your buddy you're like no 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 and then and then no one closes off the jump and you're like what what's going on <laughs> He's here it's actually fine like there's no way that jump isn't closed right now and then they'll be like yeah send the next and the next one just like another back 16 you're like that looked terrifying and then we're like oh we're i'm about to try that that looks so scary but yeah the vibes are crazy um just the training camp it's like because no one has really snowboarded that much it's kind of their first time back on snow and people are just going crazy and if you're in the contest scene basically everybody up there you're competing against each other at some point during the year in these contests and it's like if you're not dialed contest comes early december is when they start hitting right so you got to be dialed in by december and there's no park jumps really aside from sauce fade and stew by and stuff early season yeah you'll end up having like every country there and everyone's just going crazy um is it open to the public no it's just a straight up private training camp. yeah yeah which which is probably good at some to a certain extent but also would be kind of sick if it was open to public well there's an interesting <laughs> con- it's an interesting concept though because thinking about closing it off right then you start to get in the same space as ski racing mm-hmm. mogul skiing all of the olympic things that are kind of like have gone south a little bit i think are due to like closing things off for olympic teams only and stuff and i think that is maybe a downside to it's maybe a bad thing for snowboarding because it kind of leans into that like competitive ski skiing space i don't know what are your thoughts on that dude i completely agree like we saw that with the half pipe this year in the summer and that was like that was a bummer you know like this perfect pipe but here you got to pay 200 bucks a day to go and ride it a day and yeah and it just becomes like such an elitist thing which is a bummer in snowboarding you see that a lot um which is really cool. Something a good like opposite of that is skateboarding. Anyone from anywhere can go and pick up a skateboard. It, you spend like hundred and fifty bucks to get a proper setup and then you're on. It's easy. There's no other cost past that. But s- snowboarding, the barrier to entry is so high. And then once you start doing stuff like that and closing down that pipe and just making it such a scene it that it for one makes it elitist and hard for a kid to imagine himself doing it and then two it kind of just creates this bad vibe around those guys that are doing it Mm -hmm. you know like people are kind of looking at them like like that's like that's whack like you're like how are you in there i can't get in there and like it just kind of creates a whole bad deal around that is that skiers and snowboarders then Mm -hmm. at least like the summer half pipe was summer training um, two hundred bones. Huh? That's an expensive endeavor. That's insane, dude. Like, who's dropping that all summer? You can't. Scotty James. Yeah, yeah. But he's got people paying for that. You know, yeah, it's he's not got like peeps paying. Like, and if you're on the U.S. team, like, you're that's not you're not really seeing that money go. And so, if you're a kid coming up trying to get in that game, the yeah, the thing is, expensive. is that the benefit of it is that the eighteen, luckily. 18 foot half pipe below it was better in my opinion. Oh, really? They had a fun ass 18 yeah, that, that was, was like sick. so good. So luckily, you know, the, the problem is, is like the, the, the barrier to get into the super pipe. Like if you're be- a beginner snowboarder, the way we grew up, you know, Bud's hand dug half pipes, my local ski ward had this little tiny little like banked half pipe thing. It, it's a, it's a very attainable thing to snowboard on a, on a small half pipe. And it's extremely fun. And then the 18, you're like, okay, I can, I can get behind the 18, but it, you know, the 22, it's just, it just creates, it's like the vert ramp that's killed, that killed skating in a sense. It's mm-hmm. the same deal. Like it's not, you can't learn how to snowboard on a 22 foot half. When pipe. I came up, everyone rode pipe. It didn't matter yeah. what you were into. When it was pipe session day, everyone was there, no matter what your skill level. Yeah. And I think and that's awesome. probably because a lot of resorts had pipes and it yeah. wasn't getting into this 22 realm. It was the 18. It's still friendly, but you can still get super gnarly if you want to. And then I guess like even further back, you know, like the hand dug, like little ones. Like everyone's like, this is so fun. Those were the versus ones. the 22. It's like, <clears throat> this is death defying. It's scary. I go in there. I go in there and I'm like, I'll go like 
max crippler seven. That's like or a crippler. But I just I'm mainly just there to do airs because that's like the funnest shit. But I'm not trying to. Twenty two is a long. If you deck, that's a long way to yeah. fall too, dude. Sidebar. Also, watching everybody up at hood. You know, Chase Josie was doing those like really stylish. He did like a front ten heinous chuck, and then dude, like heinous. Taylor Gold was doing the front side alley oop no grabs, and and everybody was like, there was a lot of riding clips of the competitive snowboarders doing stylish stuff, you know. And then Arthur Long goes in the mix, and mm -hmm. people are coming through, and I guess. It sucks that we only see half pipe presented in the Olympic or, you know, uh, do tours or like the, we only see chucking basically. It's the like, top, top we level. need to, we need to like some, the pipe jams to come back where mm. people would just, everybody's hiking the pipe and you don't, you're not going to win if you're doing 16s, but like. Dude, just yeah, doing styly shit. Like imagine it would be sick to do a full pipe part. For some dude that's good at pipe, but like he's not, he's not doing a pipe run. He's doing a pipe part of hand plants, carves, um, like a double heinous flip, like some creative shit like that. Is it's so cool to watch. That's what I would do. I would go sesh, sesh the upper park, like ride jumps and jibs, and then go down and just post up at the pipe and watch the boys do some really cool creative stuff. They weren't really. That was kind of the cool thing I saw with the pipe team this year. Was they weren't doing like they weren't training necessarily. They were like, "How can we do some stuff that is like kind of MBD styly, um, still gnarly?" And and then the whole pipe scene down below, like the eighteen, like so many rad clips coming out from that this summer. Like it was so cool to see all that, and you see like how much people do love pipe, but you only like you said you see it on this do tour olympic x game scale but that's it you know and then as a kid you're like you're like what some kid from vermont you're like where's the pipe there's no pipe like it doesn't look fun either at that level yeah it looks terrifying and then you see and then you're probably gonna see someone deck and you're like i'm good on that real good on that yeah so i have a question i kind of want to dissect your snowboarding because when i look at the contest scene or you know take rev tours you have rev tours and then you have like the top 10, top 15 slope style dogs that are just like in incredible. And there's like, it seems like there's this, like a lot of kids that are able to break past and learn how to do 1080s and 1260, like 1080, 1080, 1260. Like there's a lot of people that have figured out how to do that. And then as you get into 14s, 16s, it obviously gets way more dangerous. Um, and it seemed like for you, you just kind of like were able to like click into that next level of past the 1080s and, and into those those bigger 14s and stuff. And, and you flip your spins too. They're not flat. So you can't really like test out when you're going full ass over tea kettle. Um, what, how, how did you break into the 14, 16 Big dog round. Dude, I think that was like when I was 17. And it was my first time going to Sauce Fay. And like I said, vibes crazy. And everyone's chucking. You're like, I should probably just get on this wave. And I remember I was doing switchback 12s, doing a bunch of switchback 12s. And like, dude, I feel like I could just do it. I feel like I could do a switchback 16. Um, and then I guess that's the thing. You, that's the thing like I was talking about with like the kids trying their first double corks earlier is that it's such a step into the unknown and then but like a to do like a triple is like the step to the unknown but like even scarier and i remember i just was like dude whatever i <laughs> i was listening to uh what was i listening to oh billy by uh six nine mm, love that track crazy song to listen to but i was just like Whatever, like just like the mindset, like I don't even care if I, I get don't body. care what people say. I'm a six nine fan. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember I just went in and just yinged the switchback sixteen. Didn't know what the hell was going on. Came to my feet and then like kind of fell over. And then I think I got it the second try. And then from there, kind of just you just get fired up, you know. And then you just kind of keep trying to chase that in a way. With Takashi yelling in your ears like that, I could see you getting hyped. Yeah, it's like that weird like mindset where you just kind of like. You don't really care if you get bodied that much. And you know people can do it, so you know you can do it. Yeah. At a certain point in time, do you kind of trust your air awareness to come to your feet? 
For sure, yeah. And I think there, but there's something to be said about trusting it too much. That's like, I've gotten pretty bodied before being like, dude, I'll just, I'll figure it out. Like I did that US Open. I was trying to do like back 12 off this side hit. And I'm like, well, dude, I've been getting to my feet. I'll just, I'll just try one and I'll figure it out. And like ended up destroying my ankle. I don't know if side hits were meant for spins that big. And also, if you notice too, did you figure out at a certain point in time that, because that you're better at like flipping. If you look at a lot of the people that do uh, front sp- front side spins and stuff, especially like they're super flat or just a little bit head dippy. But yeah, you fully just chuck them. Did, when did you figure out that that works better? Yeah, I think that probably I figured that out when I started doing like under flips and stuff. I just would they low just, center of gravity. Yeah, and it, and the, the the flipping thing is kind of a blessing and a curse in a way because it is I think probably more consistent to flip. Um, just like what I was saying, you like come around to it versus trying to stop a spin, you know, doing like the Mons Royce and like, but yep. he's a flipper too. He's just unreal. But, um, but the spinners like you, it's way more chill to try a new trick versus the flip. Like when you're flipping, you're like, all right, I'm really kind of stepping into the unknown here more where versus like, I'll just do another 360 off of this already flat spin that I'm doing. So I've kind of been. And with the way things are going, it kind of seems terrifying to try to like, like I don't even want to do a quad. That sounds actually sounds crazy, horrible. Anything after a double just seems like. I mean, watching at X Games Big Air, uh, Japanese homie mm. uh, that was just getting bodied. Mm-hmm. Who was that? That was that was a uh, what was Taiga? Was it, was it Taiga? No, it was a uh, Takaru. Takaru, yeah, yeah. It was Takaru, yeah. It's like when those things go wrong, they go they go so. Yeah, there's just so much, so many ways to die on that. It's so wild watching you guys though, because they'll you'll see you guys initiate for a triple and then be like, nope, and then like open up and like squirm yeah. around to your feet. <laughs> Dude, yeah, part of that, but also part of that is like never not commit. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be in it. Like I had one at locks open. I was doing back back fourteen and like knew I didn't get the snap and knew I was probably gonna knuckle, but. It's almost worse to pull out sometimes. So I have a question. If we, you know, I mean, you're putting down, you can do switch back 16s, back 16s, front triple 14s, all four 14s basically, right? Um, what, where are we going to be in five, 10 years? Where are we going to be in 10 years? Dude, hopefully not any further than that. You know, like who's trying to do an 18? That's the like, people so are doing them. Like, I know. We that back in the day though, like that it couldn't get much further, you know? I know, and it continues to just go like, what that one Japanese kid did that uh, 2160 quintuple deal. Millennium spin, is that what they were going? <laughs> but that was kind of something I've like. <laughs> Isn't it the one? <laughs> yeah, but the millennium, yeah. The or is infinity, that a one? infinity cork infinity. or something, dude. <laughs> you could be like a helicopter, cork. dude, and you start you start getting lift because you're spinning so fast. <laughs> infinity cork, kind of dope. dude. They'll be like on the on the videos, you know, like when a. When a helicopter, you don't you can just see the blades. Yeah. It'd be like that, but a snowboard. You can't even tell it's spinning. It's just like, it's like is he spinning or there. what's happening? <laughs> well, we we kind of have a guest question uh, that kind from Red that kind of ties in. It's a two parter, but the first part is kind of along the lines of what we're talking about. So uh, we're gonna queue up this question from Redmond Gerard. Here we go. Yo, what up, bomb hole? It's Red Gerard. Got a question for Sean. I mean, you've got to travel a ton doing contests, and we've got to talk about the things that we like and the things that we don't. Is there any new ideas or something you'd like to see change in the future that would, uh, you know, kind of bring it back to life a little bit? Second, how was your time in China? I know some of the food is pretty crazy there. I watched you eat some food that I probably would not have eaten, <laughs> um, but you seem to dig it a lot. And, yeah, I hope you boys are doing good over there. Oh, yeah, and is it Fitzsimons or Fitzsimmons? It's me every time. Oh God, dude! Um, Simon's fifth, that's Simmons a three part. Yeah, it was three. Yeah, he said three. two part and then yeah. threw three on him. I'm gonna try to have to remember all three, but uh, yeah, I love you, Red. Thanks for the question. Um, we'll just start off with the easy one, Fitz Simons, not Fitzsimmons. But do you correct people when they get it wrong, or just let it let it go? No, I don't really. It doesn't really bug me at all. But it is funny. Like I'll be like, like, oh, what's your name? Be like, uh, Sean Fitz Simons, and they be like, Sean Fitz Simmons. I'm like. <laughs> Sure. They just works, can't, I guess. They yeah. can't like comprehend that it's what it is. Yeah. Um and then there was a food in China and then there was a, yeah, what a was format or maybe like a what would you change about contest kind of question. Yeah, so the contest question 
we had kind of been chatting about it and we were watching like we were watching Chopu. Um Just WSL. WSL. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And just that format's so sick to have like the head to head, I thought. And it really kind of brings you more invested in the rider. Um where you can have you can really cheer for a rider and like you could almost and make a tour out of it just like the WSL has. But you could do a slope style contest where let's just say it's me me and red head to head and we each get two runs and then those are scored off of that. And I think you could almost like you could put caps on things um, or just design a course in a way that put a cap on a spin. Yeah, but that's just a whole nother argument that gets hard because then you're like, let's get into it. What yeah. are your thoughts? Well, I don't know. I thought it was cool a do tour to do like that first jump. Set up jump kind of. Yeah. That first jump was small as shit. Like, and then people are doing 12s. And it was kind of like among the riders. I felt like it was kind of like, all right, we're doing nines on this jump sort of deal. But then you have the guys doing 12s and you're like, yeah, that's hard. But every guy in this field can do a 12. And then you just get spin, 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 spin down the course versus a little more variety to the viewer and a little more relatability, you know. Um, but then again, it maybe it's hard. It's like hard to put a cap on things is then it's like that benefits someone else more than I have. A, I mean, I have a solution where you don't put a cap on it. Let's say for that, for that particular jump, you don't put a cap on the spins, but you say we are going to reward style on mm -hmm. this jump more than uh, you don't even have to see. You just, we are going to, re we are going to reward style as a higher parameter of judging on this particular jump. Take that information and do what you will with it. You can do a 16 on it. That's fine. But we'll also probably score, say, like a really stylish back rodeo nine or, you know, a switchback five method. Yeah. Um, just it, as high as, just it, as, you, high as probably a 12. Higher, maybe. Or higher than a 12. Style Because yeah. then you're not saying we're limiting the rotations. We're just saying on this particular jump, we're, we're awarding style more points. Yeah, I totally agree. And, like, yeah, having that style feature, I think Lax Open this year had that with the knuckle feature. People were getting beat down for hitting that thing like a jump. Um, just clearing it? Yeah, just going over it, not touching hands or anything, and just, like, doing, like, a, like a back seven or whatever over it, or, like, a back ten or something. But then you do, like, some cool hand drag that you get rewarded, which was sick because you don't see that often where they'd be like, we're doing this, and then you're like, what happened to we're doing this, you know? And then it became a full on hand drag feature that people were doing really cool, creative shit on. And I think having more features like that, where the judges are really committed to the style feature, you know, or committed to like that knuckle feature, it's something new. It's something that people want to see, you know, everyone's seen the, the back 14 and the front 14, and you can get that later in the course um with the big jump like it's always fun to have the money booter and see someone chuck clark like there's no way around that that's sick as well but like having that style feature i think would be huge and and then to lead into that point so you have like this head-to-head -head format and it just kind of breaks down you know until you have a final but having like a tour where okay locks open that's kind of more of like a big jump type of contest and then you go let's just say you go to aspen it's like pretty side hit heavy. And then you go to like to let's just say like you could even do something on the East Coast where it's like pretty jib heavy. And then at the end they kind of crown this all around border. And like you could even like have a half pipe contest because it's at, at a certain point it's like really cool just to ride everything. That's what it, that's kind of what you want to be as a snowboarder, being able to ride everything. So by having these certain stops that are like heavily based in different things and you have I mean, the ideal, it would be a tour where the win, the winner is crowned with a certain amount of money. Where, and then you, if you're on the tour, it's like just say t top 40 riders in the world do the tour. And then you sign a contract where if I'm not injured, I'm fully committed and I'm going to be at every single stop. So then you're getting, you get paid by the tour to be at every stop. You could have merch where people are buying your bib. So you go like here, Sean, you're number four this season. And then people can run that bib and make it, make the live stream accessible. Because at a World Cup, the only people that are watching a World Cup in Switzerland 
are my parents and other people's parents. My parents are like up at like one in the morning trying to watch this live stream versus, and it's, and you have to get a VPN to even watch it and things like that. It just makes it so not accessible to anyone. Um, but by having this tour and having the head to head, you get to know the rider more personally. I think it'd be really cool to see and having that contract where you're like, I will be at every contest. 100 is, really well is, explained, yeah. is perfectly explained and it's what our sports missing like obviously the world cups like you know i love watching competitive snowboarding i couldn't tell you a fucking single world cup result or yeah, whatever like when i watch down. the do tours i watch the x games i watch the olympics but like we as far as a a, a uniform Points. I watch um, natural selection. You know mm -hmm. that's great. I watched the the U.S. Open or the. I guess that that's kind of done. But the lock. I guess the locks open was a good one. But other than that, that that's kind of like. There, it, it's like we need a unified system because then there's a points chase, and then you have a points chase, and you have somebody to root for, and whoever's in charge of is it FIS or whatever's going on. Yeah, it's FIS, and it's gotten funky because of the Olympics. Yeah. Of, it's like quota spots for countries, so you have. There, I mean, there's so many good U.S. riders. Like, we'll have in the top 30 right now, I think we have, like, dude, like, 10, 10 to 15 dudes mm -hmm. that are, like, I think maybe 10 dudes that are just beast, you know? And then so it becomes, this, like, this insane fight between the U.S. guys to get, I think we usually max out quota spots, so it's, like, seven of us. But you, so now, like, if you're taking the top 40, what it should be, like, you're good at snowboarding, here you go. Yeah, not You're on the country. tour. Yeah. But then you have, like, someone who's, rank pretty deep from a smaller country but they get a quota spot and then take that from the really good norwegian rider the really good canadian rider that has earned their spot in the top 40 is a top 40 rider but now is missing out because of these quota spots and because of the olympics i think that there's a way to do a tour and then the olympic year the team like the countries kind of figure that out i think you can still have both um but i think especially having different stops that are have more of a half pipe stop, more of a jib stop, more of a jump stop. Smart. Then it goes in and Real then smart. there's a bit more of a storyline for like, oh, it's a jib spot. Keep your eyes on Luke Winkleman. This mm -hmm. could be a good one for him. Or, you know, jump spot Cleveland could go crazy here. Like you kind of have your Red's favorites. Red's got the you know? side hits locked. Whatever, yeah, Red's you know? going to go off. Like this big side hit, a lot of half pipe features, you know, have like a – have a hip in a contest. Maybe Raibu comes in for that one and dominates. Straight up, you know, like, is that, that kid can ride slope too. Like, a lot of those pipe riders can ride slope. The kid's good. And that's, there's so many things that we're missing. I love this conversation because, like, as as a fans of the sport, we need personalities to latch on to. We need humans. It's not just a rider doing their tricks. We buy into the personality. We mm. need to know who to cheer for, right? And, and once we get to know somebody... We get to know who to cheer for, but there isn't any of that storyline with any of the the fist bullshit that's happening, and and they're just dropping the ball kind of entirely. And, and I don't know how to make all this stuff. It's really complicated, but I can give my my un, unsolicited advice all day long. But going back to all that stuff, like it, it would be so good for the sport to have something that you could tune into. I would love to know. Oh, there's there's six events that I need to watch this year mm -hmm. that, and it would give us something to talk about. We're a fucking media company that has <laughs> nothing to talk about, dude. dude yeah. like, we need something to talk about, you know, like I, I want to, I want to have speculations. Yeah. Like it was fun before the Olympics. Like you were my dark horse dog. I was like, <laughs> dude, did we, did we did an <laughs> Olympic special. I'm like, Fitzsimons is my dark horse, dude. I think he's got it. And like, that's what I love about conventional sports. I mean, I know you're a Seahawks fan. So. I know we just yeah, talked about, I forgot. What is it? Simmons or Simmons? <laughs> 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 but yeah no i think like even as a rider dude i don't oh how can i watch this contest i don't know you can't like people ask me i'm like uh i don't know i think you need to have like a vpn or something and and a lot of people maybe don't even know how to set that up no mm -hmm. dude i mean it's so I mean, hard your mom, my mom wouldn't be able to set up a vpn i don't think yeah and there's a there's other what about this is i mean this is a touchy subject but let's get into it um obviously the, there's some judging situations that have happened over the mm -hmm. years uh, with with the 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 slope style particularly, and and even actually the half pipe, and and we've talked about that on, on our platforms and stuff like that. Um, do you do you? What are your thoughts on the judging? Yeah, I don't know. You can also say no comment if you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's true because he's getting judged. Me media this, training. This media training. Judged. Dude, he, I guess I'll go into it a little bit. Um, 
the judging, I think, I think it's judging. It starts with the judges giving you a clear of what they're looking for. Like that style feature, we want style. All right, then you got it. Then you're looking for style. It's not going to be a 1260 or 14 on that feature that shouldn't do as well as my dope ass switchback five or something, you know? Um, Will they tell you that though? Yeah, they'll they start do. with that, but sometimes they'll stray away. Tour, they that's what they said, and then they in the awarded meeting, they awarded the higher spin. The riders meeting, they'll basically give you a yeah. breakdown. And I think a lot of the judging, it comes down to like, and a lot of this, a lot of the stuff I'm talking about requires a lot of money. Like a big investor that is passionate about snowboarding, um, which is hard to find that kind of deal. And I think it could be lucrative if pulled off correctly. And with those marketing schemes that I was talking about, but the judging, it starts there too. Like, pay these judges. These judges aren't getting anything. 100%. Like, do we know what they get paid? It's okay, I know. Shit. I know for Olympic judge, uh, my friend who's a judge, he was telling me he was getting a hundred bucks a day in China or something. I I know this maybe not for Beijing, but I know for top uh, tier right there. Yeah, top of the. Top of top dogs. That's as top big dogs. as it gets. And they're getting a hundred bucks, and then they have some coach coming down to argue about the score. And they're like, dude, like lay off me. I just watched sixty riders hit this course mm-hmm. so many it's times. It's a thankless job. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I'm I think hundred dollars here for the day. I don't need you yelling at me. And just like how the riders would be committed to the tour, the judges would be committed to the tour and be held accountable because one, they're getting paid more, and two, these are the judges. These are consistently the same judges that are watching the same riders, so they're getting a play for the field so that's a little more dialed in that sense of this is what we can expect um and just accountability there you know these are the same guys always there i think that's huge and i think accountability also comes with a paycheck at the same time yeah that's that's a very very a uh, lot of wise words there a obviously it's a thankless job no matter what somebody's going to be think they didn't get scored high enough yeah. even if you score it, it perfectly in air quotes you know and and they don't get paid enough and every, you know, you got all these coaches yelling at them, but the, the huge issue, you know, with take for the Olympics, for example, like, um, and I do have to preface this with saying that Max Pro is a incredible snowboarder. And this is not uh, a, a situation where we are like attacking Max Pro in any sense. He should be extremely proud of everything he did and has done for the sport. And he's just like, this is not about him. This is about um, like a uh, kind of a, a mistake. So when you look at the scoring sheet for the Olympics, right? Somebody actually emailed it to me because we were oh, talking you, you about it. Mm-hmm. And the jump where he grabbed his knee was mm-hmm. the highest score jump of his run, right? So he ends up getting uh, an, a medal, obviously a bronze, right? Yeah. And, and, uh, or, yeah, 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 yeah. But bronze or silver? No. Is that gold? He gold. won. Oh, he won. He won. won. Yeah. Oh, he, he won. won with that grab. Yeah, I think it went, it went. The knee grab. It went max. So you make Mark? Mark, yeah. 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 So so he won, right? And so the highest scored trick on his run he did a uh, he he grabbed his knee on the cab 16. sixteen yeah and and so like I think that anybody can agree that that grabbing a knee you should and, and not grabbing your board like entirely missing your grab and just holding your knee is is, is should be, you should be dock points I think we were all in agreement in that right Dude, yeah so, the only time you're grabbing a knee is because you're like I'm about to die I yeah can't hold on a hundred percent and so so what what happened was when we adjust the situation we start talking about it. Well, the judges, they blame the camera crew. Well, we needed, we didn't have the angles and we didn't have what we needed. We didn't, it wasn't our fault. It was not our fault. It was not our fault. It was not our fault. Just repeatedly as we don't have the things that we need, we're underpaid. So it's, so the, the scoring was fucked up, but it's not the judge's fault, but it's the, and it's the camera crew's fault. The camera crew, it's like, it's like, well, nobody's accountable. And like you said, like, I think with higher pay, there need to, there probably should be some ownership of like, Hey guys, like. We fucked up. I'm sorry. Like, it was a mistake, you know, but we're accountable for what we did. We'll try not to make it happen again. But instead, it's like, well, it's not my fault. Somebody else's fault. It's somebody else's, and it's not mine. It's like, well, you get you fucked up, and it sucks. It's like, it's, they're humans, too. Humans, all we all make mistakes and shouldn't should be. But it, it goes a lot better when you take accountability for your actions, and you say, you know what, I... I fucked up, and I'm sorry, and we're going to try to do better. And you're like, okay, cool. We can get behind that, but the, like... Everybody's pointing at Dude, who, and everybody's and then, standing there with their dick in their hand. And you never, you never get to the root of the problem when no yeah. one like there's, when there's no responsibility there. It's just like uh, you go in circles all mm-hmm. day long, um, which is a bummer. And then for, to that tip, when the judges give Max that score, it's like, 
so I, I've heard like some people be like, oh yeah, fuck Max Perot or something like that. It's like, no, dude, no, it's no, not no, 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 no. That's yeah. not the yeah. message. We yeah. can be clear on that. Yeah. It's like, that's the judges, but then they're like saying it's the camera crew. It's like, just things got to change. There's got to be a little more money in it, which is hard to find, you know? Um, but there just needs to be accountability on every, every side. Yep. You know? I wonder if the money is hard to find though, because you go to the Olympics and they spend how much on the venues? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think it's it's. You need like a big. You need a big marquee, like huge company that's down to kind of come down come and, in and run it and just have and have yeah. fu money basically to to be able to do something like, like this. fu money so you can get away from the fist side it, and. And we just need to follow suit for the things that are doing well in our realm. Let's call it like, you know, take F1, take um, WSL. You know, they have these storylines built around the the riders and the racers. And, you know, take, for example, like, I know, Supercross, you know, and, and you just buy in. You buy into it. It's hard. We don't have anything to buy into. And I think that our... Our, it would be good for our sport and for our audience and grow everything because because the system that's in place right now is just... It fucking sucks. Like it's we, broken. like I said, like we we want shit to talk about. I want to talk. I want to speculate. I will, give me mm -hmm. something to speculate. Yeah, exactly. About. Give us a tour to follow. Give us a tour we to follow. Place our bets. Yeah, I want to gamble. I want to lose some fucking money. Did you happen to see that photo I put on the gram the other day of Todd? Oh, Richard. He might have invented the the, the boot crab. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> the trick? Are you talking about the trick police? <laughs> yeah, the trick police. <laughs> might have, he might. He actually admitted it when I when he saw the photo. He's like, that might be the first boot crab ever documented. <laughs> well, what do you think about um, performance enhancing drugs? Oh, oh, you think they, uh, should we yeah. should we be, should doesn't, they be he green light? Quite, he did a little media thing. Like, <laughs> Uh, in his head, he's like, "Should I answer this? Do you <laughs> answer? Am I allowed to answer this? Um, we're pro, we're pro roids over here. We're big pro roids. I mean, dude, I don't think roids. If you're a boarder, you're just going to be like, oh, he's going into a jump. Because yeah, that's the problem. You can't move. Roids might produce a lot more boot grabs because they just can't. You're get, trying to get there, and all like, you can find is your boot because your board's too puppies. far and you're too stiff. I want to see a back fourteen, and then you go grab Indy and you fucking break your yes. board because you're so jacked. Ah, true. <laughs> You tweak the Japan and it's it's like, just dude, everything I'm, breaks. I've been going through a board every contest. <laughs> every These crap. roids are just, ah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Let's find out who's truly the best with no parameters. No parameters. Let's see what the human body is capable of. <laughs> Let's take this to Just the going limits. two feet to the bottom. Stop. <laughs> Stop we got to We got to make sure that the... Um, that the, the run through a wall smelling salts like don't flag anything for um, the testing they do. Yeah, for yeah I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to talk to you, Sada, about yeah, that. One. Yeah, dude, good. which is crazy. They'll just pull up at your house. Like, oh yeah, have you experienced that for the getting ready? Yeah, to do dude. It? I was like at Woody's, come back down. Literally before I get my car, to come back down, and take a piss, get down, and go sit in my house. Like got some mod pizza, chilling. Knock on the door. I'm like, what? And they're like, who's coming over right now? I'm alone in my house. You Sada pulls up. I'm like, all right. And I'm like, you can tell it's them as they pull up. Yeah, they tell you they have like the little briefcase, oh, and then okay. so then I'm like, okay. So I'm chilling. I'm like, I just took a pee, so it's gonna be like a little bit. And so I just start drinking beers, and I'm like, do you guys, you guys want a beer? I got some beer, and they're like, no, we're good. And we ended up just like chilling, watching uh, Shit's Creek for a while. Great show. Yeah. Great show. They just chill a lot. Yeah, dude, I was like pee. chilling for like an hour. I like couldn't because you can't drink too much or your pee's too diluted, oh. and they won't take it, which is horrible. Because then what? Now you pee, and now you have to chill again, and then you got. Then they would have chill with you though. That would have been kind of tight. Yeah, no, they. Yeah, I was trying to get them to drink. Get these me. guys with like an eight-hour shift with you on the couch. Yeah, I think they'll chill as long as you need, it's and their, then it's their job. And then eventually, like oh, I got to pee, and then some dude will come in there with you and just literally. Drop your pants to your knees, pull your shirt up so you can see the whole deal, and then it's mad awkward. Oh, they have to like, straight watch. Yeah, it's mad awkward and it's dong out. It's like check it out. It's pretty it's weird. Like, yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, it's like, you start some small talk. Like yeah. I remember, I was How's in Italy. Weather? I was in Italy after a contest, and the guy starts running the water. I got a little stage fright, and he's running the water. He's like, "It's all good, man." And I'm like, "Dude, this is weird. Like, it's so weird to just have some dude just looking full at you, eye like contact. full on, like." Just like looking at your 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 dick and and like there's some eye contact going on and it's just like dude you ever go full like just rock hard just kind of like fucking that would be tight you can't <laughs> you can't really pee though 
take a bunch of Viagra right before you do the oh test. Oh my god, that'd be so funny. You're but, sitting there peeing, and he's watching. He's just, I love my job. You're having to. <laughs> he's you're, telling you how much you having to do like one of the. If you see yeah, four year old virgin, you know, over the he, shoulder, you go yeah. over the shoulder, uh, <laughs> banking it off a picture like me, myself, and Irene. <laughs> Well, that's good stuff. All right, we got a guest question from Dave Reynolds. Here we go. Hello, Bomb Hole. This is Dave Reynolds, U.S. snowboarding team coach. I've got a question for Sean. Tell me how your first podium in locks went down and what that meant for your chances of going to the Olympics. Yeah, that was like uh, that was a pretty surreal day for sure. Um, and it kind of wound up that it was like me. Luke and Brock, and unfortunately Judd, um, Judd busted his ankle at Duke. He came out. He had a chance to go to the Olympics too, but pulled out. You know how ankles are. It's just so tough. And uh, so then it was me, Luke, and Brock all competing in locks trying to get this last spot on the team. And so I think it came down because they do like qualies, semis, and then finals. And then so it's just me and Brock in the finals. And I think I pretty much, I don't even know what the math was, but I think I had to like win or get second um, to make the O show or something. And like me and Brock were like, dude, like all love, whatever, um, going into this. And first run, I like landed, but it wasn't like the sickest thing. I kind of messed up the knuckle drag feature. And then I think I was like in sixth or something. And, then Brock like landed sick run and was in second or somewhere in that realm. Or he might have been first at the time. And then it was kind of like spaghetti moment and just kind of you talking about the mom's spaghetti, spaghetti reference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like lose yourself. Mm-hmm. That was that's like, it, it yeah. was like spaghetti. Yeah, yeah. Brought mom, spaghetti. To vomit eat on my t shirt already. Situation. Yeah, yeah. That song. You were calm and ready. Yeah, the song gets you fired up. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Eminem for that yeah, one. Give him an air I horse. think he's inspired a lot of people yeah. with that. What a great song. Yeah. Uh, what a great career that guy's had. But no, it's crazy. Then I landed my second run and won the contest. It was like pretty surreal. Like more people were dropping and I just kept staying in first. And I was like, holy shit. And then I, yeah, and then I won. And then that is what qualified me for the Olympics. And then I think I headed over to China like 12 days later. Damn. Surreal experience, yeah. but the the knuckle trick wasn't audible because I was like, they don't back my first knuckle trick. I was doing like this cab one fronty. It wasn't audible. Is that what you said? Yeah, audible is a term in they in, can't use it. No, audible is a term in football when the quarterback gets to the line and there's an original play and they have to do they see the way the defense is lined up and they do a different play call and they call that an audible. So it's like a last minute change, I guess, would be a word for an audible. Yeah, and I was like, I'll just try to do a Miller flip, I guess, and that worked out. And yeah, and you went to the parking lot on your front fourteen. I went back and watched that run. Yeah, yeah. I figured I don't you know. You went big on all of his jump tricks too. That seems like jumping. You just rather go big than small. You're probably better off. You know, they for say the most part. They say go big or go home. <laughs> you go big or go home. <laughs> they say go big, go home. I showed up. I didn't go big. I went home. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, but that like just to provide a little context, like there was one spot left on the Olympic team. And you you basically had to fucking win in order to make it to the Olympics, and that was what we call clutch. That's ice water veins. Ice water veins. Yeah, that was yeah, it was pretty and, wild. And I watched uh, Dave Dave uh, sent over the interview of your post uh, run. It was a little bit of a Ricky Bobby situation. I don't know what to do with my hands. It seemed like a oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, dude, I hadn't had that many <laughs> interviews at that point. <laughs> That was really happening. Kind of <laughs> felt like a spaceship, you know. <laughs> Gosh, I gotta go cue that up. This is a full Ricky Bobby. Ricky, look Bobby. at him now, though. Look at all the media yeah, look, training he's had since yeah, the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he, a, he can dodge, <laughs> he can weave. He's got it all. Although now. he hasn't been Louis Vito, and although Louis must have an incredible amount yeah, of media think training. Think about the training because he can just like Jedi mind trick yeah. you out of a question. You don't, you don't, even, even, you don't even know what you asked. You You're think like, you at, and then he, you ask something different. Yeah, Jedi. Did you? Did they give you media training for the Olympics at all? No, I mean. Kind of. They kind of just said that. I think they just go deep when, they you, when said, you place. Yeah, they said don't talk about certain things mm. while well, you're in China. For like, example? Don't be bagging on China okay. while you're over there. 10-4. Because like, if they take you, there's not a whole lot we can do. And I'm like, If they take you? Yeah. They like, send yeah. Out, I'll tell you, if they take you, they get Liam Neeson in there. Yeah. Who's Liam Neeson? Taken seven. Yeah. 
Have you ever seen the, the series <laughs> Taken? It's there's like a whole like, there's seven movies where Liam Neeson yep. comes no. save somebody after they get taken. He well, rescues that could have been one of us, dude. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. They would have yeah. sent Liam out for you. All right, I think it's time for you know what, buds. Oh, wow. Name that video part. No. Name That Video Part is presented by the Icon Pass. And our season of fun is fast approaching, Stony Buds. From east coast to west, across Canada, the European Alps to Japan and beyond, the language barrier has just been broken. To turn up the fun factor, the Icon Pass welcomes three new legendary destinations to its family of mountains. We're going Chamonix in France, Sun Valley in Idaho, and right in our backyard, Snow Basin, Utah. Additionally, new pass options have been added to the mix, starting at only $269 adult, the Icon Pass Session 2-day, and the Icon Pass Session 3-day offer a range of affordable entry points. It's time to bring the stoke and get ready to let the joy out with an Icon Pass in hand across 50 of the best mountains in the world. Head on over to IconPass.com. Now, Fitz Simons, how are you feeling? Confidence level 0 through 10. Dude, I've been stressing this one for sure. I think it's going to be nice just to get it over with, but I don't know, two. I heard you woke up and maybe did a little research this morning. Yeah, it's like cramming for a test. Dude, it doesn't really work. <laughs> his like friends were going to, golfing, and he had to stay back uh, and trying research. Trying to smash some, some info in my head, but how are you supposed to? Like, yeah, how do you know? There's How, how many yeah, videos are 20, out there? Two, dec- yeah, three, zillions, two yeah. decades of snowboard videos in, uh, what, half hour? And That's maybe, some serious cramming there. And maybe in the early times, there was only like 10 a year, but mm-hmm. nowadays there's like, I don't know, even how many a year, 100 a year? I didn't give him any parameters either. It wasn't Ooh. like, hey, it's like every snowboard video. What did you watch? Dude, so originally I was watching some Mac Dog stuff. That was that was kind of cool to go down that rabbit hood. Those rabbit are fun hole. To watch. I didn't realize how much stuff was at hood. Like there was so like, back in the day, old they're, Meadows footage. Yep, they're filming parts up there. Whole yeah, movies. dude, it was insane. That was super cool. And I had like a couple of my hood homies come over and we're watching those, and that was sick. Um, because you, you can find them all on YouTube now. Mm-hmm. Mac, Mac Dog, Dog spent all this time Mac Dog, them up. It's so sick. Um. So I'm going to try to keep watching those. That actually got me really hyped to snowboard. And then... Uh, Robot food, right? You did uh, After Yeah, Bang I did, a, I did uh, yeah. After Bang, Lame, and After Lame. Nice. Those were sick. Something that was... was a big morning you had, huh? No, no, no. This has been oh, okay. like a little bit... This was when I was still in Oregon. Right. Um, But like something... Those were like... The music they were using in those were so yeah, they, sick. Like they kind of changed the game when they they popped in some new yeah new music that got some new vibes going. So it kind of felt like I was blowing it, like I haven't seen that kind of stuff. So there's cool to the bomb hole kind of gave me the <laughs> made me dive into it a bit All more. All of a sudden you gonna, hear the cars on a on a snowboard song and you're like, this is dumb. Yeah, like they had like what Talking Heads. It was yeah, a Talking Heads. This must be the place. Yep. And then I met with you, <sighs> which is a banger and. There's also a robot food playlist out there, which yeah. I have on my phone. Well, well Matt oh, really? got us yeah, used to really snow. Well, he Spotify. got us used to snowboard rock, basically. Yep. And then yep. they came in and kind of changed the game. Same with Whitey. Yeah. So that that was a cool little rabbit hole. Thanks to you guys that put me down. I was like, oh, I better get educated, and I'm gonna keep going down that because like a lot of inspo for just like tricks, like like dude, like front. I don't know who it was, but like front five knows, like. Just like simple stuff like that, like that standard. looks so sick. Yeah, actually, Parker, like huh? some weird, like not it's not even that weird of a grab, but just to like think about, like it's easy to get lost in your own tricks mm-hmm. and just keep doing those. And then I think watching some stuff like that, like kind of opened up, like oh whoa, I never thought it. Like front five knows that's that looks sick. Cool. Now let's well, see how he does. Yeah, let's see how you do. Uh, your contest. I'd say I put you in contest guy category, so you don't have as much to lose. True, he doesn't have a lot as much he, riding. He doesn't on have this. as much riding on it, but it could be. This could be huge for you. Okay, here we go. Dreamland, Bob Bernquist. Come on! Wow, dude, you just threw him a meatball. Uh, let's go. Movie. Yeah. Dreamland, Bob Bernquist. You think? No uh, way, dude! Oh, congratulations! I'm gonna give you your. Prize oh, you get your prize back. Oh, sick! You got a uh, bombhole Yeti carry all. Shout out to our dude. people at uh, at uh, Yeti for hooking that up. And then you also have uh, all kinds of uh, b hole goods in there. This is sick. I think you got some towels and you got some hoodies. Uh, maybe a coffee mug. Let's go! Thank you, boys. I think there's probably some it. smelling salts in there too. Nice. Yeah, who hooked you up on the on that suggestion? <laughs> 
The smelling salts? No, no, no. No, the, the song. Your brother. Uh, okay. But I will yeah. say that I've se- I've hung out with you guys. Like I don't remember who in your crew. Like maybe it was like Peace Park or some shit. Like oh, it was probably it was uh, Peace Park. No, no, it was a uh, recharge. Recharge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, you guys like get together and you guys hammer beers and you watch Bob Berkowitz Dreamland <laughs> Park <laughs> all the yeah. time. Yeah. Over Dude, and there over. was a period where I almost like watched it every day. <laughs> <laughs> so sick. Because he's just like the sickest dude. Like I like that. I can respect that. Other Sleeper. is there any other notable like? Hammering beers and getting fired up and things to watch. Do you have any other wrecks? Dude, like a lot of Bob. Like we still we watch his like a best, lot of the, the best run. The best best vert run ever. It's insane. That's a pretty sick one. Um Remember his blunt kick flip on the rail above the vert ramp or whatever? Did you ever see that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in X games or something. Dude, well, how was his uh he was doing like I also watched Dreamland. In the, to get this song, he does a a kickflip indie backflip over the mega ramp. It's just Jeez. like filler. Dude, it's just filler. That's, that's like right filler. in the middle. And then if it kick wasn't gnarly enough, they bring the chopper out. Yeah, dude. And the they chopper's go, buzzing yeah. around. The chopper. <laughs> yeah. The and chopper then at the end really of the video, he jumps on it. He like airs up, grabs it, and he's hanging on like all sus. Like, how long was he hanging on like that? And then just goes you later, like above his compound. It's the sickest shit ever. Skydiving. I, I like the clip of the helicopter just going like completely like losing control, spinning around in the bottom. Dude. And they're like, he's like drunken copter pilot or something. It's like, how are those blades not going to hit the QP? You hit something. Yeah. Sidebar, like talking about uh, when you're hammering beers and watching clips. I know that like uh, Scott Blum, like every time he like hammers beers, he goes on like a Sean Palmer, uh, like oh, deep dive on YouTube yeah. and they just watch like old Sean Palmer clips on the hammer beer. So that's another potential yeah, option. That that's was, great. That guy was sickest. Have you have you seen the the miserable champ- yes. champion? What a documentary, dude. Insane. I showed up. I went the biggest. I deserved to win. Yeah. Dude, we need more of that in snowboarding. <laughs> I think it'd be so sick. Like the cocky, but it's like funny. Dude, I remember when he backing it up. seeing that after he did that at the event. Just totally serious. Mm-hmm. But he's like drinking too, I think. Yeah. So good. He would have like a beer before and after. Mm-hmm. Like, I got drunk last night, yeah. I'm drunk now, <laughs> and I'm about to win, yeah. or something like that. And, he did. <laughs> and then he hasn't won. The best thing in the whole thing is, like, they interview him after the contest, and they're like, they're like, what What, are, what do you think, Paul? He's, it's too damn easy for me. I might just have to quit. Yeah. He's like, I might as well quit this shit getting too damn easy. Yeah. And then he, like, what, goes and wins in mountain biking. Yeah. Like, like he, that's what he did. He quit and won some other shit. We need some more post-game interviews like that. All right. For part two and name that video part, this is for the listeners. Uh, comment on the photo of Sean on our Instagram. When his episode drops, that's where we pick our winner. Here we go. Primus? Yeah, that is Primus. It's a great video part. Baseline. Here we go. We just took a quick little uh, break there. Uh, did you just hear something, Fitzsimons? Yeah, I was uh, walking back from the, the cooler. It's bad, dude. And I just hear Budge go, Jesus Christ, <laughs> from the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad in there, man. Oh. It's a war zone. Yeah, it seemed like a war zone in there, dude. There's a uh, closed sign on the door now. <laughs> I know that you, that your covenant do not go in there. <laughs> when you're saying that yeah. mid Rhea, you know it's it's going down. Dude. Well, it's like that high powered gas. Yeah, no, it's horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you when you're, you're, you're pissing out of your ass, you're like, Jeez. high compression. But it was the extra like the the uh, what the are those called that clean the paint off the walls. Oh, it was a it was a pressure washer, was like a full <laughs> pressure washer. Dude, it's crazy. Pressure washer of Rhea. Okay, oh, so that what that's me to say Jesus. <laughs> Well, that, you know what happens? We actually had a really healthy lunch today. Too healthy. And I think Bud's body just doesn't agree with Shit that. Shit went right through yeah. me, man. <laughs> it's going into shock right now. Well, <laughs> what happened to Bud's, man? He just he, he ate a little too healthy. And yeah. A little healthy meal put him down. <laughs> he put him down. He might not be able to resuscitate you you him. You got to do that like in increments. You can't just go for the full healthy meal, man. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay. So you mentioned something like we were talking off air just on our little break here. And you said something about like uh, how, you know, we were kind of bagging on fists and, and uh, you had some cool, good things to say. Yeah. So 
obviously we want things to change in the in the comp world. I think most, I mean, pretty much all the competitors, competitive snowboarders would agree with that. But in fish, you know, it just a lot of those guys were kind of just the hand they're dealt, and they're trying. There's a lot of good people in fish that are trying super hard to make a difference in snowboarding. Just kind of what they've been given by maybe like the over the organization, you know, it's a ski racing company. And so snowboarders already kind of an outsider in that, like a, like Robbie, he's the dude who kind of is, yeah. Big shouts to Robbie. He's, uh, the fist homie that runs the snowboard side of things. I mean, he's the man and he, he's all down with the riders, like whatever the riders want, he's backing it. So big shouts to him. Um, I think it's just a tough, it's just tough, you know. The whole deal's tough. One hundred percent, and that's and that's the other thing too. It's like and one other thing I'll, I'll get on on board with you here too. It's like everybody that's there, like if you're judging a snowboard contest, making hundred bucks a day, you fucking love snowboarding, right? Like you're doing yeah. that because you love it, and and you've dedicated your life to it most likely. So it's like we don't want to we don't want to make uh, these guys out to be horrible people. We just care about it too and want to see it do well. And and even so, like saying these things, it's a complex issue. Because we simply don't have the eyeballs to have a lot of money. Like, for example, mm-hmm. the NBA gets millions and millions of views. You know, uh, going back to take uh, Formula One. Formula One gets millions and millions of views. Then that trickles down to Supercross, and they get less views. And then it comes down, by the time it gets to snowboarding, we are, you know, bottom of the barrel for eyeballs. So it's really, it's not really, a, it's hard to be a lucrative thing when people aren't invested in watching it, you know? For sure. Maybe you get, like, just some passionate billionaire that's willing to just be like, let's do this tour. Sounds like I could make some money. If it goes to shit, pretty good tax write-off, you mm-hmm. know? Like, I don't know. Something like that. That's what we need a little bit. 100%. I don't know how often those passionate millionaires step step up. Very, I have to be a billionaire these days, too. Seems very, yeah, uh... Definitely a B on that does not seem have to often. slap a B on that one, huh? Yep. Uh, going back to that, I was also thinking about, so, you know, we're, these tricks are getting bigger and bigger. And, um, you know, something I saw recently was Tor Gear did uh, a cab 540 on a park jump. And then before he, he brought it in, he just cranked a method at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I personally love seeing the, the like, cool tweaks, you know, the switchback five methods and, the you know, just the unique axis is i love like the marcus cleveland back rodeo flat spin kind of head turny things um dude the you know mons roisland you know rodeo no grab seven yeah you know, so things that like one that in new zealand yeah what what about what about tricks going in a good direction do you have do you have uh any insight on that dude i mean i get pretty fired up every time i see like a back rodeo switch back rodeo it's just such a crazy access to see someone on um things like that exploring that you know like what did stolly do at the olympics he did like this crazy double, double chicane, chicane like yep. and dude like it didn't even didn't get any respect on yeah, it i felt like up. i'm like i'm like all right if you want to have a team meeting at the top of this and be like who wants to do a back 16 and then and then you go who wants to do the double chicane flip i guarantee you almost 90 percent, if not more is going to be back 16 because the double chicane flip is like, no one's doing that. It's gnarly. How do you even figure that out? You know, versus back 16, you're adding another rotation on yeah. back 14. So it's things like that that need to get rewarded. And I think, it, like, you see Stale pushing that and a couple other guys pushing that, like Marcus Cleveland, the double uh, frontside rodeo. Mm-hmm. Pretty sick. Dusty's on that wave. Yep. He was doing that in um, Czech Republic. Like, his run was sick, super creative. I think it comes with rewarding that and also recognizing that that shit is hard mm-hmm. it is scary to get like a double backside rodeo like dude did someone just double backside rodeo 10 like mm-hmm. that's insane i don't want to try double backside rodeo 10 that's gnarly totally and then going back i think that that the the parameters too i said earlier you award style but maybe you don't just reward style you reward style and creativity because that would make those tricks the double chicane it, it's a, to me it, it's it's pretty stylish but it, it's really creative and outside the box it's like innovation innovation you know, yeah, in innovation should be rewarded in yeah. our sport well, exactly. do the judges like get all that i don't know you know like at the olympics you're kind of like did they get that because yeah. that that was crazy 
I thought. I th- and every rider up there was like saw the score come in and go, whoa. Yeah, well, yeah you, everyone. When you watch qualifiers, pre-qualifiers, finals, semifinals, like you're just run after run after run of just getting hammered with snowboarding. It, yeah. it, it's hard to get it that's right. That's what I'm wondering. Year. Like, you that's... Know? It has to get a little mind melting for him. And that's something with that. If you did a head to head format, you're just ju- you're comparing two guys. It's not the whole field, and I think it keeps it more entertaining uh, for the judge as I well. See that. You know, I could definitely see that. All right, let's uh, get into a quick Patreon question. This is from Jesse Correa. With there being so many talented boarders right now, and so many without a board sponsor, is that a choice? Are you waiting for the right contract slash company? Or is there just lack of money for great boarders like yourself? Yeah, that's kind of a loaded question, I guess. Um, or do you just break 11 and you need to get some specialized stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, you're looking for the right gear for sure. I think it's like the gear plus the contract. If the company's willing to give you some money, you know, I think it's hard. Board companies, I think it's hard to give out a lot of money unless you're like the top dogs, like the Burtons of the world and stuff like that. Um, but I think it really comes down to gear. Like your snowboard matters the most out of anything. Like you can be wearing some funky outerwear and be like, whatever. But like if your board's like doesn't feel good, that's a that's an issue. That's a problem. And like if your bindings aren't dialed, that's an issue. If your boots are weird, that's an issue. So I think it's a mix of both of those things, the contract as well as the gear. I think it's more so the gear, you know, because that's the most important thing when you're riding. Um but also, yeah, like if they're willing to hook you up, give you a contract, throw you some some biscuits, as they say here, um, then you're psyched, you know. But if a company's not paying you, but you're hyped on their gear, it kind of becomes like you're psyched, but it feels like you deserve more, you know. So well, we back- we tried to iron out a deal in, during the break, and it's I mean it's kind of high, high the numbers. Were yeah, high. yeah, it's a, yeah, it's bidding war for the run through wall smelling <laughs> yeah, salts. So I, I will say I don't think there's a rider more on brand for run through yeah. wall smelling salts personally. But um, going back to what you said, I thought it was interesting. You're talking about good equipment. Uh, how many boards? You know, in, in one season, let's just doesn't mm. you don't need to name the brand or anything. But like, what's the most amount of boards you've broken in a season? Dude, one season I broke eleven boards. I would break a board. Maybe twice in a contest, if not at least once, and usually like one in practice, and then maybe one in the comp. Yeah, you guys are riding those things to the limit because the average consumer probably has never broken a snowboard. Yeah, and the average consumer will make one board last several seasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that. Going back to what you guys are doing when you're chucking 14s, 16s, going huge, landing deep, landing on the tail. Landing it's like deep. you need you need good equipment. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that. Plays a huge role. But in other news, kid just signed a n- new deal. Hurley. Woo. Yep. Congrats, dog. What's going on with Hurley? Thank you, dude. Yeah, they've been they've been sick. Like a lot of really cool people over there. Uh teamed up with Hale and Brandon Davis. Shouts to those cats. That's right. Um Yeah, it's been great. They're they're awesome. They've had my back like super heavy, and that's been really cool. It's also cool to have like the surf side. Of things, I got like a wetsuit for the coast, which was sick. Um, yeah, really hyped on that first contract. So, and they're new in the snowboard game, right? They haven't done outerwear before. Yeah, I think their lines dropping this year. It wasn't out last year, but we were oh, running wasn't, it. Oh, just because mm-hmm. I was gonna say, I thought I saw Davis on them. On yeah, the yeah, field. like we were running it, but it wasn't was dropped it this, to public. It was just the samples at that point. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think they're they're That's starting cool. to dial in, and I think it's gonna be exciting. How's the gear? It's good, dude. You're paid to say that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been liking it for good. sure. It's been good. Um, they they keep making tweaks and stuff, and we've been giving them feedback on everything. And I think as it just because they're new to snowboarding, I think as we continue, as they continue, I think keep tweaking things and just get it money. Well, the fact that they're listening to you guys is great. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good. Well, uh, I think it might be time to talk tarps off. Tarps off. Yeah, tarps off. We're gonna go. Uh, we're going to, we, uh, yeah, talk about tarps off first before we go tarps off. Actually, let's go tarps off first. What are tarps? Because, I mean, I had a, uh, I was moving and I used some tarps to cover the uh, trailer in my backyard. Yeah, tarps off is essentially what we're doing right now. Yeah. You guys are going tarps off. Yeah. You don't got any tattoos like Chris. No, still working on that. You, do you have no tattoos? Dude, I got this 
Little one. Yeah, one well, little little. That, that's your tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Kids uh, inked up. That kid is, dude. Dude, little. You just uh, get out of prison or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking guys inked up. Little man. stick and poke, dude. That, it was supposed to be. That probably was, took a really long time. You got three, four, four hours in the chair. I was thinking, I was thinking twelve hours, dude. Like, yeah. No, it was super maybe painful. Just work on this next dot here, man. Yeah, it was, I was sweating. It was a long session <laughs> for long. sure. Yeah, really was, hurt, man. Yeah. Really hurt. So for the listeners, uh, we're wearing tank tops. These uh, guys are aka the beaters are tarped uh, off. Uh, wh- tarps off. Yeah. What What happens when you when you switch into to beater season, dude? I think it's kind of just about being somebody. Like you just kind of you're trying to what do destroy you mean about like being somebody. Like wake up. Like th- th- we had this running joke this summer. And be like you wake up and be like, let's be somebody today, huh? So why don't you be somebody today? And it's not just kind of like going up and like trying to get a clip or like. Just going ham for yourself. Um, just, just doing it the best you can. Yeah, just like everything you got. You're committing Into to everything shit. everything you're doing. Yeah, I'd almost say at least skating, like this thing comes on, you're going on. Like you're going to commit to every trick you're on. Um, just because you got that on. Yeah, I've been seeing kind of these got popular like a little bit ago because I think we were running them in like 2020. It was like me, Dusty, Sleeper, we're running them pretty heavy. And um, kind of from there, and then you start seeing them a lot, a lot of them. Are you, and then you, are see, you saying that you guys repopulized the Peter? No, 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 no. <laughs> Not saying that, but I did just this certain trend. I think we were kind of on the trend as well when like it was kind of getting big. And because I seen it spike in like '93, and <laughs> kind of went away for a little while. Yeah, and, that, and it's back. And now it's back. It's back. Love Here it. we are. Full circle. Um, but you see a lot of guys that you put on the. They put on the they put on the beater and they don't go off like and you're kind of like well you're just trying like if you're snowboarding you better be going off because then it's kind of just for show it's like it's kind of sick to see someone like they don't care if you get all skinned up yeah they're running the beater they're still trying everything they're doing they would it try. right yeah yeah it's like when you're you're putting the kid on you can't show up and ride fifty percent yeah exactly. you're riding one hundred and ten percent. You're putting on for your city. In the yeah, words if you're going to yeah. show up wearing that, you're you're doing. This. He's putting yeah. on for the entire Hood River when he throws the whole throws it on. straight up the whole world the whole community. Yeah, yeah. I like whole it. Oregon, I like it. And then yeah, snowboarding, you're going Richter. Skating, you're going Richter. Yeah. What about drinking in it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going Richter. <laughs> now I wonder. Now wait, what if it's like a cold, cold day? You still throw throw them on. Yeah, mostly we're spring riding in these bad okay, boys. Spring, spring thing. Because then you're just. That's just kind of, that's almost like crazy. You're like, dude, this guy's got to be so cold. He's going to shatter if he, yeah, he's gonna true. Right. get broke that's, off. That's o- Olympics, did you think about dropping the jacket? Yeah, that would have been sick. Yeah. Going tank top daddy What on? if the new Olympic outfit for U.S. was one of those? Oh, my God. Dude, dude, dude whoever been... is, is Volcom, are you guys involved again? Let's get that going. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be a huge advantage. It would be <laughs> so intimidating sick. the other com- <laughs> competitors. It would definitely just imagine all the people up to on the sides helping yeah, you. Yeah, just everyone's guys, winner. These guys are about to go Victor. <laughs> dude, <laughs> Reynolds and Mike are just freezing up there, just, just up like there. <laughs> big old mittens and just yeah. tank extra, top on. Extra large mittens. So. The fans on the side and beaters are just like. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's all about marketing, and that could be the yeah. what we need. I think that's what we the need. next thing. Definitely, cotton is also <laughs> ideal for those. Cotton towns. is king yeah. out there. It's good. The, they actually call him the Cotton Mouth King. <laughs> <The> cotton- <laughs> Horrible band. <laughs> Do not recommend listening to them. I, you know what? I don't think I've ever heard the Cottonmouth Kings, but man, what a name. What a name. Cottonmouth Kings. <laughs> That's great. Real before your time. Them? That's like no, a early I, 2000s. Yeah. That's yeah. an insane name, though. It's a great name. Yeah. A lot you of rapping. They're from Cali. With they're rapping like about that. weed. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're 100%. from Cali. Now, I was kind of wondering, uh, you know, talking to Red, he was mentioning that like, when you guys uh, get a little tuned up, you get a little, you get a little cross-eyed out there. Um, a lot of times you're often uh, end up like you show up wearing a T-shirt that's like a normal size and then it becomes ripped and like stretched to XL and like soaking wet. Um, what's going on with that? Dude, <laughs> I don't the hard hitting question. Yeah. I love when they come out. <laughs> yeah, dude, my T-shirts, they go from like a size medium to like actually at my knees, like. The first time it happened, I think, was Sauce Fay and I so it's not just a one time occasion. Dude, it seems like it's pretty consistent. Which is <laughs> like weird. weekly. Yeah. No, yeah, it's a pretty consistent thing if I'm having a big one. Um, it'll be down there. Like Sauce Fay, 
I was walking out of the bar and all that's kind of where it like started. Everyone's like, dude, what's good with your shirt? It's like it was at my knees. Like, so how does it happen? Dude, I think it's just from dancing. Hey, recharge it happened. I, w- recharge I witnessed it, happened. it at recharge. I witnessed it in the flesh. Dude, recharge, I lost three shirts that night. Got them ripped <laughs> off me. I don't know if like people are hanging from your shirts or that's what gets them Dude, along, I think it's kind of just me bouncing around. Bouncing like, around. Because I like... I, I like dancing and like kind of just like getting. You get a little beer on the bottom of the shirt. It gets heavier, yeah, getting starts. loose and like just yeah, just yeah. it's fun. <laughs> Maybe a, a little the bloat expands it a little bit bloated. Yeah, the bloat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm glad we debunked. Yeah, that. I'm glad. I was wondering wondering the situation on that. On yeah, the recharge shirts. though. They were just people were coming up and just going and just rip them off and be like, well, there yes, was another that one. One's gone. Yeah. Also, you mentioned your. Uh, you were you talking to Red. You guys have some fun drinking games, and you said you said you had a pretty good soundtrack if you're going out drinking. Yeah, dude, best soundtrack that I found. Drinking soundtrack, dude. So like uh, drinking games, like you ever played like Seven Eleven or Doubles? Um, Seven Eleven or Doubles, two hundred, whatever you're playing, really it works. Um, put on the Dodgeball soundtrack. Oh wow, <laughs> it's so killer, dude. You get like Eye of the Tiger. Mm. Um, Final countdown. Oh wow! Like just bangers. Good, basically. good songs. Yeah, those it, are all like heavily motivating songs. Yeah, so. yeah, and it's so funny to see see someone like playing two hundred, rolling the dice to the final, and countdown. it's like the final Ooh. countdown. They're like, oh, <laughs> great song. Patches of Hulan, crushed by ten tons of irony. Let's mm-hmm. do this. <laughs> okay, uh, dude, Vans contest here like two summers ago. Didn't you? you did you win it? The AM version? Yeah. Yeah, I think I I won. My brother got second, but that was actually a funny story because I was, I was so bummed on competing skateboarding after my combi experience. I was like, I'm never doing that again. And I remember the park had just opened. I had class qualies day, which I was psyched about because I'm like, no pressure to do this contest. I'm not doing it. And then I went with my brother to practice. He was doing it, and I'm like, and Mo. This is when I met Mo Jennings, just the man. Big shout out to him. Um, I go to practice and I'm like, yo, I'm not in the contest, but like this park just opened and I've been wanting to ride it for a while. Is there any way I can just like hop in and skate? And so I skated. I mean, my brother would just do what I mean, getting to skate that park for the first time. It's like one of my favorite parks ever. It's insane. And Mo was like, I was leaving. And Mo was like, dude, you have to do the contest. You got to do it. Like skip class. And I'm like, oh, I got class. Like, dude, whatever. Skip class. You got to do this contest. I'm like. I don't really like compete in skating. And then he was like, dude, you're doing the contest. And I was like, all right, whatever. I'll do the contest. And yeah, worked out. It was sick. Super fun vibe. Everyone was going crazy. Worked out as in you won it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So dope. Uh, we actually just reminded me, we went, we haven't even talked about your Olympic experience. You uh, went to China and Red asked you a question, something about uh, I don't eating, think that one answered, eating right? some food or you ate, you're eating some wild food. Yeah, dude, I'm just not a picky eater. I'll eat whatever. I think it's kind of fun to try to branch out. And Red's always giving me shit because he's like, dude, you're going to eat that. I'm like, well, it's, worth a, it's worth a shot. It's pretty funny, though. He rips on me a lot for that. Um, the thing is, a lot of it's really good, though. Yeah, I'm like, dude, it's Sub's, actually really Sub's good. It's kind of weird. I'll be like, it's actually really good. And then... Do you eat any fish eyeballs while you're out there? No, no. But then I'll be... But then I'll be sounding like buds on the toilet. Yeah. And I'll be like, ah, it was in, good, but never China, again. They use like a lot of different oils than we're used to. Yeah, for sure. So it's just kind of the, the kind of muttering uh, Jesus Christ to yourself <laughs> while having aggressive diarrhea. Yeah, exactly. Describing. Okay. Well, exactly. Dude, and then you get out and you seal the door. Don't go in there, bro. <laughs> in there, Please bro. don't. And then Red will walk by like, ooh, <laughs> what the hell? Well, you got to think Red also, his sister is one of the best chefs in the entire world. So dude, he yeah. does, you can kind of throw his opinion out because he's eaten too he's good. Just spoiled. Yeah, he's his spoiled food palate that, is a yeah. little spoiled. Did you experience any of the Eastern style toilets? Was it the butthole not the, washers? Not the hole. Like you talking about the holes? The in holes the, 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 it's just a hole. It's just a oh, hole. Okay, yep. And you'll no. know, you might stop at a certain, even a hotel. That's all they got. But you might stop at a certain area where they got Western style here, Western style here, and then like three Eastern style. And if all those are used up, it's like well, technically, is that's, that's our natural that's our natural way of uh, taking a shit, right? Yeah, like, but I haven't shit like that ever in my life. Oh, really. dude, I've, I've used those out in the yeah, back Japan, country. Yep. yeah, yeah, in the woods. But I'm not really. That just seems kind of difficult. Almost yeah. the worst. What if the, you missed the hole? No, that's know. that's what I was gonna say. You 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 have to kind of like 
push it in a little bit. That's what happened to me. I was oh, not. I wasn't on in. target. I yeah, wasn't on target. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to. How'd you push it? You use your oh, they, they 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 napkins. They lose my yeah, shit. You know what I mean? Paper towel. And yeah, whatever, yeah. But I mean, that's I your know. natural. That's why they have the squatty potty where your legs go up. So you. Yeah, the old squatty mm, potty. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to get more like your. That's how your body's naturally. I don't know. After I poop, I don't want to like play with it. See what we're actually going to do here at the ball. We're going to remove the toilets and just put a hole. We're going. We're going Eastern style. <laughs> it's a little harder with the spackle though when no. you start going yeah, so what pressure when washer. They spackle, dude. They eat a you got to be on shit, target. Maybe you could have like a little rope you could hold on to so you don't lose balance. That would or be something. tight. See, that's stepping up the game. True, yeah. Kids, kids a thinker. Yeah, deep thinker. The, well, the roast, the 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 rice kind of binds everything together when you're over there. Oh, uh, that's true. But China though, the there's a lot of street food in China. Well, we're getting into the weeds a little bit here. So yeah, so China, you you went there for the Olympics. You're there for a hot minute. How was that experience? How, how nerve wracking was your run? Actually, first of all, let's start with that, dude. I don't know. The run was pretty. I remember being really nervous before that. You know, definitely hit the bathroom a few times. But the run was pretty chill. Um, I feel like kind of just tapped into this this mindset of the same mindset I had at locks. I was just like, whatever happens, happens. I'm just snowboarding. I don't care about this contest. And that's kind of been the best strategy for me is being just like, I'm snowboarding. I'm here with all my buddies in this super cool place. Like, I'm so lucky to even be doing this. Whatever happens, happens. It's all good. So that was, I was like pretty calm actually for that. Um, I will say I didn't love like the China course a lot. Um, And what I found if I like the course, um, I don't like usually ride with music. But if I don't like the course, I'll ride with music. What and are we slapping? Was, dude, I like everything. Like Everything. I'll hit like rap, indie, rock. Um, are you just going shuffle on the playlist? Yeah, dude. Sometimes sometimes I'll find a song they'll get really attached to. For a while, I was like really it. attached to Got to Have It by Method Man. I uh, played that song a lot for a lot of contests. Uh, but then... But then recently I've just been like all my shuffled all my like songs shuffle them and then practice with I'll that shuffle the like songs yeah and then I just practice with that um, if I when I get my first full pull usually I'd be like oh I just use that song I guess apparently I was vibing with it and then just run that do you have a pre contest routine not really um, I do a lot of pacing I'll do some pacing at the top for sure. Fair. Uh, I just try to like get away for a little bit, at least before my first run. And like, kind of no matter what happens on my first run, I'll usually be like kicking it with the homies after, um, even it land or not. But I'll do like some pace and just kind of like try not to think about anything and just go do my own thing for a little bit. Yeah, because there's a lot of strategy with slope style there too. Because you have a bunch of tricks, you got to piece it together. There's kind of an art to piecing together a run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. That's always the tricky thing, and that's kind of why I like slope style. It's like you dealt a new thing every time. So trying to get a new run and figure out what works for you and what does it on the course is fun. And there's something that maybe people don't think about in a slope style run is let's say you want to do a switch trick on the rail and then a regular trick on the jump and then a switch trick. Like what They, they dock you points for reverting. So uh, basically you have to like, line up everything where you land switch and regular and, mm-hmm. and get wow. that all queued up. And you got to think about like, you got to think about which ways you're spinning, which can be hard. Like cab, I'm so bad at spinning cab. Um, so it's always a challenge for me to try to get some cab in there. I'll usually try to put it on the rails or something or, um, yeah, things like that when you're putting together a run and you kind of end up like kind of getting like what tricks for the most part you do at every contest. But but yeah, definitely fun to put together a run, and I found with the music thing has helped. If, if I don't like the course, I'll be like, oh, music, and then I'm down. You guys were over there for 21 days. <laughs> Dude, I cannot That's tell you rough. how good it felt to get on the flight home. It was insane. That was that was a long haul. Like, at first, I was excited. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get the whole experience, and like, dude, like, a week into it, you're like, we know we going home. Yeah. This is insane. Because also with COVID, it kind of felt a little more... You're, like, so locked down. You're with your crew. You're wearing masks outside. Um, they had, like, those Roundup pumps, you know? And they'd be, like, spraying disinfectant. 
The what bumps? Like, you know, Roundup like, oh, to spray your grass uh, or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they were spraying it with Dude, the Roundup. Dude, shit was wet with, with disinfected. It was kind of nasty. They were just wetting everything down. Yeah. I mean. But yeah, pretty incredible experience either way, though. You know, like, opening ceremonies is really cool. Uh, just wild, I think, something that was shocking to me was how big of a deal it was. When you're there, you're like, whatever. And then you're kind of like, dude, there's like, like the amount of money that is pumped into this event is insane. Like they have a whole nother village for us. They like, they built a town, which is kind of hard to wrap your mind around. And then that was something that I think we were talking a lot about the Olympics was the snowboard tour. And like, why does everyone care about it now? Like it felt like, no one gave a shit, and then the Olympics happened, and now they care. But that's only every four years, and you just have to be on that year to get to the Olympics. When like, And you could almost argue that some of the other snowboard contests has more talent because you have all the Norwegians. You have all the U.S. guys, not just four of them. Or like you have all the Canadians. You have all the Japanese. Like it, The field is huge, and the Olympics is just four of – the best, but then also snowboarding is like, who is the best that day? It's like hard. There's not that one dude. I mean, obviously you got your top cats, but for the most part, it's flip flops. So that was something that we were like, dude, why do, why do people care now when we can like, obviously people care about snowboarding. They're into it right now. If we can just make it more accessible. That was like my big takeaway from the Olympics was how do we get this more mainstream? Cause people do care. Like you like my Instagram following just like, just for going. Which was wild when I've been when I've been snowboarding, you know. So it's also an interesting thing to think about too. Is that well, everybody like kind of snowboarding goes in this crazy direction where it almost feels like we're losing our heartbeat for a second with the Olympics too, mm-hmm. in the sense that going back to all the team trainings, team people, countries are riding together. Uh, it, it's got a bit of a ski racing vibe. All of a sudden, like mainstream media is really into it strictly for the sa- fact that it's it's the Olympics, but the year following the Olympics is a kind of a great time to recalibrate Mm -hmm. and find our North star again with that stuff, because it's like kind of now everything almost goes back to where people don't give as like a large population aren't going to see any snowboarding mm -hmm. for a while. So I think it's actually, it's kind of good to recalibrate the year after the Olympics as like a sport or contest series like you're talking about and it feels like yeah after every olympics every olympics it's like there's always this giant conversation of what can we do better you know Mm. from that i think almost every year that's happened um yeah 100 percent, and it definitely has got better in a lot of senses going back to like todd richards he was talking about when he did the olympics it was combined two runs two runs only oh Mm -hmm. yeah that's crazy you know so you basically just have to be conservative and consistent. And like, you could almost argue, is that going to bring more style into it? Maybe. I don't know. Like, are you going to go for that like hero run? Cause you have three chances at it and like try to do a, like a 16, 16, 14, 14, 16, 16, whatever it is. Maybe you add more style with the combined format. <sighs> Something to think about. Something definitely to think about. How'd you get the nickname Bond? Dude, that came freshman year of high school. My really good hometown buddy, Kale, he would just walk into math class. We had math class together, and he'd be like, the name's Bon, Sean Bon. <laughs> and then it kind of just from there turned into Bon, and then that's what everyone in my hometown was calling me. And then the snowboard world found it, and here we are. Found it. <laughs> I also heard a, another story from the Olympics from Redmond. Gerard. From Reggie. Reginu. Regimon. Regimon? Regimon. Regimon. <laughs> From Regimon. That um, maybe you guys were a little fired up. You're kind of excited. You're at the Olympics. And maybe there was a slap situation that happened. Do you want to kind of break down the, the slapping debacle of 2022? Yeah, I could break that down for you guys. Um, so, yeah, fired up at the Olympics. Just had, like, it was super fun, great experience. And now we're finally we're, we're getting out of there. On the bus to go to the airport. And we're on the on the bus and just I don't know, talking shit to each other, blah blah blah, back and forth. And I go, I dude yeah, I was like, dude, slap me. Slap me. He's like, No. I'm like, slap me. And just like boom, smacks me across the face. 
and just grab like cups my ear in the process and blows out my left eardrum. No, like actually blew it out. Yeah, yeah. Blew out my left eardrum and then She's it was bad. wild because then I had like a 35 hour travel day all the way back to You're not supposed to travel with a blown out eardrum. Yeah, I know. Well, it was like pretty chill. I just felt so funky the whole day. Kind of felt like because I've blown this one out too. I've blown both eardrums out and this one like just kind of feels like you're looking at yourself from third person. It's it kind of gives weird. you vertigo. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild. Full Brazilian blowout. So yeah, yeah. They call that a Brazilian blowout. Brazilian blowout. Did they actually? <laughs> no, that's <laughs> that's a woman's hairstyle. Oh. Actually. <laughs> 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 no, you, you could have s- just said yes. <laughs> they actually call yeah. it that. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's called a Brazilian blowout. <laughs> it could have been one of those things. <laughs> and then it could have been one of those things. For years. <laughs> yeah, like I, I keep passing it along. Someone blows out their eardrum. Oh, yeah, Brazilian blow. Oh, that the Brazilian blow. Oh, yeah, someone slapped you in the face. Brazilian blow, yeah. And then the ski patrol, you're going to walk up, someone's hurt. Ski patrol's like, you got a Brazilian blow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 10 4, we got a Brazilian blow out on our hands. <laughs> Call it paramedic. So going back to Red, he mentioned that you guys talk shit to each other to get fired up when you're all scared to do 1600s or whatever they're called. Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, what, are you, what are you saying to each other? Yeah, basically, we'll just be, be like, Dude. I mean, you got to do it eventually, right? Just do it now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. You going to do it? And I'm like, I mean, if you do it, I'll do it. He's like, okay, I'll do it. You're like, okay. And then he, then he does it like, I guess, okay, I guess I'm doing it. And then you go and I like follow Red, bounce off the knuckle right after he does a perfect back 60. <laughs> That's what's crazy about Red, too, would be like me and Luke. It was me, Luke, and Red and Sauce all battling. And... We're trying back 16s, and this dude is battling with us. And we're like, what is going on here? Like, Red didn't already land it. Like, Red is like, it just seems like it comes so chill. And where it's like almost crazy when he was like, we were all battling together. It was super sick sesh. But, like, probably trying it like seven times, trying to land it. And, but yeah, stuff like that. Like, dude, you just do it already. What are you waiting for? Just do it. And it's like third run. Just do it, man. Because you kind of do have to do it, huh? If you're in your field. Yeah, eventually you got to do it. So it's like, what are you waiting for? Just saying, saying stuff like that to each other. Like, what are you waiting for, dude? You know who doesn't have to do it? Me. Frank April used to say, like, you get to a spot and it's like, I want to do this trick. He's like, if you don't do it, I'm going to do it. And you're like, <laughs> fuck you. I'm doing it. <laughs> and he was serious, right? <laughs> yeah, 100%. You don't do backlip, I do backlip. Yeah, you're like, I'm going to strangle you after I land this backlip. So going back <laughs> to this stuff. I was just thinking about you guys riding these four pack in slope style, four pack Shakors of just gigantic jackers. And in addition to having incredible air awareness of knowing where you guys are in the air and initiating spins properly, there's a huge factor of gauging your speed properly. You guys are so good at that. Like, how do you, how do you fucking do that? <laughs> That's what I'm asking. Dude, I don't. I think you just hit a bunch of jumps a little bit. Like you just kind of get like a mental. It's just there for you guys. Mental like. speed gauge, I guess. Kind of hard to explain. I guess. Like, can you? You can tell though. I know. Like you can tell when you're actually getting to the top of a lip, and you're like, "Oh, I overcooked it a little bit. Oh, I'm yeah, going yeah. to overjump this thing, right?" Yeah. Yeah, like for sure. Like you know, once you're on the lip, it kind of at the point of no return. When you're on the lip, you know what's about to go down. Like, you know, this isn't gonna be like, good. if you're going to knuckle, you're like, gotta, gotta get going. <laughs> gotta get there. Like, especially if you're spinning, like, I, let's just make it to my feet on this one. So not sideways on the knuckle or something. Mm. But yeah, definitely. If you're, especially if you're like setting a trick, cause by the time you're like setting the trick, you know, but you can't like pull out. So you kind of just have to figure it out. Like, especially if you're going too big, that's like kind of the scariest can be. Comp run two, you see people, you know that the rider is coming to the jump. They know they're not going to make it to the landing, but they're like, comp run, chucking anyway. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Comp run, it's like, you just, it doesn't really matter. Gotta go for it. Yeah. Well, I have a snowmobiler buddy. That I would always say, when it comes to jumps, the more you hit, the better you get. Mm-hmm. So that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Yeah. Reps. Yeah, reps. Get those reps up. What about uh, asking for a friend that has... Uh, Bad fundamentals. Um, <laughs> I think I knew that friend did. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> setup turns. Setup turns. You guys focus on setup turns, like like going more straight at the jump? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, especially as a grom, like that was kind of something that you kind of grew up doing, I guess. And then now you don't really think about it, but 
for sure that's like where everything starts you know is those turns and like being having good edge control and like like on, if you're spinning backside like not like shit hooking off the lip you know um because then you have no control over your spin you're just like you we call it heli dicking heli dick never heard that term you ever heard wow. no, heli dicking I'm, I'm gonna use that though well you're, yeah you is that like in a dictionary is that like a I guess like snowboard dictionary. Urban dictionary I'd say maybe? It's, it is now. Like, you know when you see some dude like shit hook off the lip and yep. then they're just like, yeah, like they have no they have no control over That's this. Thing. Yeah, because you're kind of at the will of the G's that you're on, and I think it in my mind it came from heli dicking, as in you're just so G'd out that your dick is like G'd out, and it's like a <laughs> helicopter, it's like a meat helicopter. Yeah, yeah a meat yeah. helicopter. Ellie Dick, and I like that. Swinging around yeah, like Most couple. often seen on backside spins yeah. when people just go hard. Backside switchback, right. dude. Yeah. Switchback, you see a lot of it. Mm -hmm. wow. And you watch, like, the, the big dogs come through. They're going straight. They're setting an edge, and then they're, like, torsionally flexing their board. And That's then what's just, crazy, the torsional that, flexing. Pop. That'd be something, like, with cab. Not a great cab spinner. Do a lot of pre-slipping on cab. Yep. Slipping. And I'll be, like, going in, and someone might ask Red at the top or Luke and be like, dude, why is he uh, This guy seems like he's going to go really... Going really fast in this jump. He's like, oh, he's, he's spinning cab. He's spinning cab. Just, just wait and just. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. switchboard slide, double undie flip. Yeah. And sometimes that seems to turn into a trick, too, for mm -hmm. people. Don't we see that recently? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you almost see people do cab ones to like back 10 or cab 12. <laughs> they can just do anything they want nowadays, these guys. Yeah, the the uh, it's also like very similar to like a slice on a off of a T. You know, it's just like, it's like a backside spins like a hard snap hook into the woods type yeah. of deal. You know, I exactly. know all about those. Yeah, buds is, buds is actually he had a couple of good shots in the tourney the other day. So I'm ready to go golfing again. Um. All right. So I think it's time for the pub beer it crap is time. Shoot. You got one. I got one. Oh, we're not we're not cracking. Welcome to the I don't pub know, I just beer crap play. shoot. Oh yeah, pub your crap shit. How is it? It's delicious as always. They're kind of Northwest dogs. Yeah, how's your dude? You're, you're Northwest from your hood. Dog. Are they Hood River? No, they're yeah, bad. they're Bend. Bend. Yeah. But how, they how you like beer? It? Yeah. You drink those at home? Not often, but yeah. I have like the. You should probably. I'll have start, the Ten Barrel dog. IPA. That, they have a good one. Ah, all right. The sister Which company. It? They're yeah. cheap and they're fun and they're delicious. So give them cheap a shot. fun beer, pub beer. If you're gonna cheap get blacked fun. out, get a pub beer. Mm -hmm. Or if you're gonna have three. Yep. Or one. Or if you're gonna drink responsibly. Or if you're gonna get an Uber. Play. What's know? the games you play when you drink? Two hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred is really fun. So at twenty one asshole. Is that a game still asshole? Uh yeah, it's like a card game, but I don't oh, know. Okay. maybe less we drinking. But like Seven Eleven or doubles, play that. Mm. Uh, and then you got like your classics like Rage Cage and um, beer pong. Beer pong. Yeah. Oh, you choose pub beer for those and uh, roll those dice and we'll tell you what you got to do. You can buy beer pong on Sevy these days. Beer pong? Like a table? No, like the kit. Or. or what is one of your worst bails? One of my worst bails. One that really shook you up. In the words of Mob Deep, some shook ones. The shook ones. Which one really shook, shook it out of you? The shook ones, part one and part two. Which one jarred something loose, if you will? Jar Jar Banks. <laughs> Jarred me loose, dude. Actually, I had one. It was like the Z rail in the park. It was like probably four feet off the ground. Z rail or a C rail? Z like, as in ZJ. DJ. Yeah, DJ Z trip. Yeah, and I went and just stuck my nose in the closeout of the Z. Like it wasn't like full close, like ninety, but pretty good. And and it just went straight scorpion. I'm pretty sure my board hit like Back hit over my head, like over your head. Put the braces in my lip and then like ended up having to get surgery on my shoulder after it was all said and done. But that was a pretty good one. Yeah. Had a cu had a lot of funny ones though, like just bouncing off knuckles and stuff. Just going like fun and games. Drunk driver off a of knuckle. You got hurt uh the Olympics before in practice, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I happened? did uh last run of practice. I was trying to do switchback sixteen and then landed it, but was kind of too much on my toes and like Compressed super hard and then flipped over and then like kind of tomahawked down the landing and then ended up like hooking toes again and like crunched my ankle. Um, and then it was pretty bodied after that. And then I just took like a bunch of Tylenol and Advil and then competed in finals and then kind of just chilled and then did big air and just did like front 14, back 14, and then that was like, I'm good. Wow, 
So that was, yeah. And then I got, got it operated on in April. Any advice for people dealing with uh, injuries? Dude, I thought Miles had some really good advice that kind of related to him a lot on that. They kind of try to stay off your phone. Um, go for a walk. Like, I was, I would go and, like, listen. I'd listen to the bomb hole. I'd go, like, golfing because um, I could golf. And go do something casual, like a hobby, read a book. Uh, but definitely, like, just try to stay off social media and stay, like, don't go and spend hours on your phone. I think it's really toxic for you. Great advice. Really good advice. All right. We're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about Bub's Naturals and the products that they offer. The first one we're going to talk about is their apple cider vinegar gummies. What's the deal with these things, Jones? Well, I'm a candy addict, so these actually replace that for me. So I'm pretty stoked on it for that. And my gut feels pretty good afterwards as well. Perfect. Well, they also have their collagen, which we talk about all the time. And they also have MCT oil powder. What the hell is this stuff, Jones? I've been using that a little less, but it's coconut based. Um, again, really good gut health kind of evens things out when you're eating all crazy, maybe some, you know, crazy Mexican street burrito or something helps there. And then uh, mental focus in the day gives you a nice little brain bump. Okay. I heard a little rumor that they're either offering hydration packs now or available soon. Any word about that? There is word about that. I have heard about them. I have not yet had them, but I'm super looking forward to it. Hydrate or die. I mean, come on, son. Perfect. Well, if you're interested in picking up some Bubs Naturals products, head on over to bubsnaturals.com and use promo code BOMBHOLE, one word, for 20% off your next purchase. All right, it's time for hot takes. Ooh. Buds, you're feeling like a hot little potato today, aren't I you? I kind of feel like an overbaked potato today. <laughs> All right. Fitz Simons, a.k.a. Uh, what was it, fetus? What was the it wasn't st- fetus, baby. Stunt fetus. Stunt, stunt fetus. Okay, stunt, yeah, fetus, stunt fetus, fetus, a.k.a. Bond, MJ, both <laughs> male and female of snowboarding. Who you got? Female, J.A., Jamie Anderson, all day. I think she's answer. the reason that female snowboarding is where it is today, I think. I think she could have called it for sure, a while ago, just given her accolades and everything she's done. Not like call it, like at least in a competitive standpoint, but she's kind of continued to keep pushing and like people are like for years and still like chasing her. And I think that has brought the level up so much. Like you see like now you have like Zoe and those Japanese girls and like even the U.S. chicks, you know, like I think a lot of it is due to her and her commitment to the progression of women's snowboarding. And then male-wise, this is something I was thinking about, but everything kind of led me back to T. Ricky. Um, All roads lead to T. Ricky. Which All I know, yeah. Roads. <laughs> All trails on the mountain. You, yeah, you find yourself in Jackson. You know, oh, what the <laughs> hell? All, all, runs, <laughs> all runs lead to T. Ricky. I don't know. He's just had that career of – he's had the parts, you know, um, just insane parts and – done the contest thing, been very successful in that. And then what now he started like something to like natural selection, which is really tight for snowboarding. So things like that, it's like kind of hard to argue against him being the goat on that end. Good answer. Most underrated. Who you got? I think, I think Tiarn Collins pretty underrated. In my mind. I think he puts up big time. Really good. Puts answer. up for a city. For a city of Australia? N- New Zealand. New Zealand, okay. New Zealand, and Z, they only, only have like one Ze- or two. Are you, is he Australia? I think he's Was there one Australia. city over there? Uh, <laughs> Wanaka? Yeah. That we're looking at. <laughs> Wanaka, yeah. Steel or powder? Pow. Best style ever. 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 It's best style, whatever. To, honestly, to I'm you. saying, to, you. to me, probably, honestly, Dusty. The homie's just, I mean, dude, he's sleeping. I sleep at the wheel. Team he, narcolepsy. He's special out there. I love yeah. watching him snowboard. It's like it's something Imagine special. if we found out he really was just narcoleptic, just sleeping out there. It would make so day. much sense. Yeah. He's been taking tranquilizer darts to the <laughs> neck before boarding. <laughs> he puts one in his leg real quick. <laughs> I'm dropping it. We got smelling salts. Uh, we we, bu- we salts. busted. He's got, he's got those. <laughs> the, what's Sleepy it called? Salts. OSHA? What's the company OSHA. called that, that uh, tests you? USADA. USADA's USADA. like, yeah, we, uh, we got... Uh, we got Dusty for some tranquilizers. Yeah, we found yeah. some elephant tranquilizers <laughs> in his bag. Everyone goes, that is... He really is a sleep out there. Everyone goes, that is not very surprising. Yeah. That's how that goes. Like, <laughs> it's definitely going to be elephant, elephant tranquilizer. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> He's 
flipping through the air like Gumby. <laughs> Woo. Okay, best video ever made. Best video ever made. Oh like, shit, I've only watched two. <laughs> <laughs> How many videos have you ever seen that were made? Uh yeah, best movie, Dreamland. Big Damn. Bob Burnquist guy. Yeah. Okay. Um best snowboard graphic ever. Woo. It's like the hardest question like, uh, on the show for him right yeah. now. Like, he was like, uh, uh, who wants to be a <laughs> I was like, well, I'm trying to think of my stuff. It's like whatever I had. Well, we should make we should make it like who wants to be a millionaire where you can have like phone a phone friend, a friend fucking, uh, uh, use a lifeline. They're lifelines. Life yeah. Maybe use the internet. I don't know if that's one of them. I mean, yeah. There's a snowboard graphic that you like that you're like, damn, that one's Dude, cool. I fucked with the, the Forrest Bailey, like the all white um, uh, headspace. He's he an artiste, so of course yeah. these are going to be wonderful. I thought that one was sick. Okay. Worst trend. Mm. Not getting gnarly, I guess. Just like kind of. I like that. Kind of just trying to like cop out on some stuff and just but actually not putting up, I think. All right. Uh, what about, I got another new one. Have you ever, you've hit backcountry shit, right? Mm-hmm. Well, not a whole lot. But and that rock was. Go to backcountry. first try backcountry jump slash pat down trick. Dude, probably like a front seven. I think that's pretty. Tail grab? I was thinking melon. Mel, ski, and hutch. Yeah. Grab tail checks in the mail. Grab tail checks in the mail. Yeah, like that. So you're, I heard you're kind of a sports guy. You Seahawks guy? I mean, more yeah. Marshawn Lynch? Let's go Hawks. Yeah. How do you feel about uh, no more Russell? Dude, I think we got a good purchase from him, honestly. I think it was, we didn't have a good football team. Got rid of him. Got a couple draft picks that. I think we got out when we could. Because it's like, what's the point of having a really bad football team and a really good quarterback? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about when the New England Patriots, uh, you guys basically had the Super Bowl locked down and you decided to uh, throw the football, not hand it to, like, hand it to Marshawn Lynch? Before, yeah, that, someone else was a Seahawks fan. <laughs> that was you it. just like to throw this at all. I mean, it's one of the greatest. It's the greatest moments of the failures. It's one of the failures. greatest, greatest moments in the history it's of sports of as a failures. Patriots fan. <laughs> Yeah, as a Pages fan, pretty good one. But yeah, I don't. I mean, if I'm coaching, I'm probably not making that call. Uh, I mean, there was talks. Maybe it was an audible from Russ. So oh, there's some. He's got speculation. You have insider info or oh, wait? Explain audible one more time for me. Not planned. It's like where you get to the line and you you have an original play, and then you like see what the defense is doing, and you go okay. different play. You call something. You yell like oh, blue forty two. Like no, you yell, yell like, like Omaha. Yeah, and then your crew knows. Okay, we're mm-hmm. not going with what I said. We're going with the other play. Yeah, uh, good stuff. Now I have a hypothetical here. Would you rather? Let's see. Would you rather? What's after an eighteen hundred? Twenty one. Eighteen hundred. Yeah, twenty twenty one. All right. Let's say you're on. You're on a twenty one savage. Uh, we'll call it just a massive. 100, uh, not 80, 80 foot, 80 foot kicker, jacker, right? You have to do a 21 mm-hmm. or you have to return a punt, but you can't, you can't stop it on the 20 yard line. And like, you actually have to run it back with NFL, with level NFL caliber type yes. dudes. Yep. A 21, 21 or punt return. What do you got? Dude, maybe a punt return. I don't know. I think I'd maybe just like hope that hit wasn't so brutal, or maybe I can dodge. They're probably not going to dodge. I feel like he could run it all the way back. Look at that stature. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But he might have short legs. He's kind of short. Yeah, yeah. But there's great running. You know what's good about a small running back is they can get through the holes. Yeah, they can find. Yeah, less less area to tackle. Maybe twenty one sixty just seems mind boggling. Mind bottling, like when all your thoughts are like, bottled up. Yeah. Mind boggling? Is that weird? <laughs> mind bottling, yeah. <laughs> you know, like when, yeah, your mind, it's all in the bottle. <laughs> all right, let's talk. You uh, drink a lot? Another question I got for you. You're in the contest world. You got video part goals? Yeah, dude. Actually, I've been wanting, I was wanting to do this after the Olympics, but unfortunately I got hurt. Um, but this year I'm really hoping to do like a project on Hood. Um, Sort of when the con, I mean, I de- my ideal season would be get my three results out of the way, 
do that and then go and just go really film heavy because I haven't really explored that world and I've really wanted to for years. Um, but do something fully hood based, maybe early early spring when the snows were like really good and then almost just carry it into the summer and do like a full part um of maybe it's less like really pow but it's like that that slush type of deal or maybe pow if i'm up there in the spring but do something like that maybe set up that elimination hip and like i've been doing a lot of studying like video parts and like sammy carlson um has a really sick video on top of hood that i've watched a lot and there's a lot of really good spots so that's something that I've really wanted to do, and hopefully I can get around to it this year. We always ask about setups on the show. Um, what board you been riding, and, and how do you set it up? So this summer I was kind of messing around with the K2 Manifest and the Antidote. Um, angles, rocking 12-12. Uh, 12, positive. negative 12. No. Posy posy. How do you? No, no, no. Pos- Duck would be 12, negative 12. Yeah, yeah, 12, yeah. negative 12. Uh, but kind of playing with it. Actually, no, I'm not 12. I'm nine. That makes more sense. I'm nine, nine. Yeah. Nine, nine, nine. negative nine. Yep. Um, but definitely like kind of play with it a bit. Uh, I think my stance is 20 inches. So pretty standard. Um, do you no, detune no your back. edges? No. Okay. I just no run. forward lean. No forward lean. Okay. Any other weird things you did your setup? I guess you guys have wax techs that keep those things dialed in, right? Yeah. But if it's like just me at home, I don't run. I just don't detune. Just run it out of the out dry of the plastic. dock. Yeah, dry dock. Yeah, actually, I'll put a wax on it though. First, I think it's important your first first time you get on it to wax it. You want to dry out. Well, I think it's also important re- your relationship with your snowboard. You know, it's kind of like a you kind of are giving it some love. Yeah, might give you some love back for sure. Especially if, if you're gonna there. like explain like a big day on it. You're like, dude. Put some wax on that. Get I, fired up. There's because that also adds like I think if you wax, especially the night before, it's like you're not you're almost beginning the process of going snowboarding the night before as you're waxing it because maybe you're thinking about what you're gonna do the next day. Mm-hmm. You're making sure your setup's dialed. It kind of it's it's not necessarily just the act of snowboarding. I think it's like getting your mind into the mindset to go snowboarding. Yeah, it's like it's like you you're really showing you care to your snowboard mm-hmm. and say so your snowboard's gonna care back. Mm-hmm. You leave that thing dry, it might break. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we've pretty much done the damn thing. The last thing we got to do is thank you. So you want to throw any out? Dude, my parents. Like, Should we give them the super air horn? Yeah, straight up. It's like a 21 gun air gun salute right there. Yes, it is. Yeah. They Reserved deserve, for only the best of the they best. They deserve all of it. I mean, seriously, they have so dope as people. They. Like, everyone that comes in my house is just, like, my house is your house. My parents are putting them up, feeding them, like, the coolest people and just so supportive of what I do and wouldn't be here without them. And and I guess another big thank you to the Hood River community. Um, very lucky to uh, to be from a place like that where everyone's so active and involved in the community and got a lot of love this year from Hood River, and that was something, yeah, special. I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. Everything you do. Going to the Olympics, representing the USA. Slap some respect on that. And uh, just being a cool member of the community. So appreciate you. Right on. Well, I appreciate you guys. What you guys are doing here is so sick for snowboarding. And appreciate you guys having me. Incredible. And lastly, got to thank everybody that tunes into our show, uh, that buys merch, that subscribes to our podcast, all that good stuff. You guys rule. We could not do this without you guys. And we got another episode coming at you next Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Over and out from the bomb hole.